again, many people are seen doing this, even in um, Hindu dance, you yeah. see a lot of this. And it supposedly awakens the crown chakra, which is the snake. Exactly. So six, 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 six snake. Wow. Yes. All look at, interrelated. Look at, they're all, all interrelated. interrelated. What's up, everybody? Thank you for joining us at LED Live. We have an awesome show with our special guest, Blessings Win. She's going to tell us about how she used to be a licensed certified practitioner teacher of yoga and meditation and all these things and just where that journey has taken her what she's found out about that whole lifestyle the whole practice that millions of people are being sucked into i mean you see this stuff everywhere so if you're the type of person that believes like i don't do all that spiritualistic stuff and all i do is just the exercise and stuff this is a show for you please yes. stay to the end you're not going to want to miss this that's right absolutely so just to start out i think i should definitely make a, a personal statement and that is that my goal is not to offend anyone no. um you know i was a practitioner i was sucked into yoga i was devoted uh to the practice i didn't understand that there was a spiritual component to it mm. i thought that it was just exercise i didn't see a problem as a christian doing it mm. and i didn't see it as a problem if you were secular and you weren't Christian. Mm -hmm. I just didn't see that there was anything to be worrisome about. And so it's really important that I that I make that personal statement that this is not a, a picking on um, yoga or its roots of Hinduism. This is just more of an informational um, a package so that people who are partaking in it understand what they're stepping into mm -hmm. because it's not what they're being told. There's a lot of undisclosed information mm -hmm. that you need to know. And I believe in a God that practices informed consent. Amen. Mm -hmm. My God, the creator Yahweh, he does not say to anyone, you are my servant. Um, and, and it's that way or no way. Right. He says, you have moral autonomy. You have the right to look at this doctrine. You have the right to accept it, or you have the right to walk away from it. And not so in the demonic realm. Mm -hmm. And yeah. so we're going to go into that. Um, if you're eating something and I know you're allergic to nuts and yeah. I say, look, it's on the package right here in nuts. I'm doing that out of love and not yes. because I want right. to hurt your feelings. Right. And you really like no. that brownie. No. I don't care how much you like it. I want to tell you that there's something harmful. In no. There. And this is, again, it's not to attack you know where hinduism comes from it's not to attack india or indian people mm -hmm. i love indian people i loved my time in india i love how sweet natured there are they are uh, this is about a practice and a, a a religion or a cult that's just that's disguised mm -hmm. as a religion and something that's good for you and it's something that can lead you to quote unquote salvation mm -hmm. but self salvation and and it's not true so mm -hmm. honestly, if I had been given the information at the front end of my contract, I would have had an informed consent to participate. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, none of that was presented to me. Mm -hmm. Everything that I was given was diluted and basically bastardized mm -hmm. so that I was left blindfolded and walking in obedience to something that I had no idea was mm. demonic. Wow. Mm. And again, this is not an offense to the culture or the group or the people. Um, this is about the spiritual side of yoga and what it really is about. So we need to be able to separate those two. And yes. you're not pointing the finger at others. This, no, this, this is, is my own story. experience. This yeah, exactly. is my yeah. story. You don't have to agree. I'm just giving mm -hmm. you information yeah. that wasn't given to me, even though I spent time at an ashram, um, spent thousands of dollars to get these degrees in Ayurveda, wow. in therapeutic yoga, in Ashtanga yoga, in Bikram, not Bikram, excuse me, in, in um, Pawana Muktasana, in in, um, what else? Ashtanga, did I say that? Um, therapeutic yoga, Iyengar yoga. Um, you know, mm. I did not at any point get the information that I'm about to give to you. Mm. And the reason this is important is because a lot of people are licensed to show you or instruct you in yoga, but they themselves don't understand what they're teaching right. because it is it is almost created like a bar class. That's kind of how they're teaching it, devoid of the real practice, the veiled mm. experience that comes with it. 
And so it's very important because you could be the reason to lead someone into mental illness, um, wow. depression, anxiety. Through yoga. Through yoga. There are, mm. There's research. There's lots of uh, pseudoscience involved in yoga, and most of it is unproven. It's just a way to get the Western side interested in it, yeah. right? And so you hear things like, oh, if you do, you know, plow pose, it's going to, you know, help with your thyroid function. Plow pose is a pose where you bring your legs over your head. And um, what it, in, in effect, it, it cuts off the circulation to your thyroid gland. And so the yoga philosophy, westernized philosophy, is that you're cutting off circulation to your thyroid gland so that you can purge out the bad blood cells. And when you release the bind, right, that position, and you go mm -hmm. back to normal, all this new blood rushes in and invigorates, invigorates the endocrine system, the thyroid. But it's actually not true. Wow. Yoga is actually a practice for death. Oh, wow. Mm. It is a practice, again, for death death because life is in the blood and life is circulation yes mm -hmm. i mean i don't know uh, yeah i don't know if a lot of practices ever would teach you to cut off the circulation mm -hmm. that's interesting so so again and it's also something that in in india when i was in india my time there you know the indian people really looked at us bizarre like bewildered mm. like <laughs> this is a bizarre situation like you come here wanting enlightenment we don't even practice this stuff. Wow. Like, we yeah. don't even do that. We don't want no parts of this, you know, like. They believe there's a direct spiritual connection. Yes. You know, there's. You cannot separate it. You cannot it. separate it. But in the Western world, they're like, well, I'm just stretching. And this particular, there was a guest on our show. Uh, he was a. Um, from India. From India, yoga instructor. Yeah, Ivan Raj. Ivan, oh, yes. yes. I know Ivan. And so he, he was saying that they, they would feel offended over there. Absolutely. Because they're like, this is like you said, this is our religion. And um, I remember because I edited this video, you were saying like, it's like someone coming into the Christian world saying, I want to be baptized, mm. but I don't believe in your God or yeah. anything. I'm just going to. Yeah, I just like the ritual. Yeah. yeah. So like that doesn't make sense. Mm -hmm. uh, and like you just said, they saw stuff, people doing things that even they wouldn't do. Yeah. We had a guest one time. She was the same, same story. Uh, got into yoga, which led to meditation, which had led to ascended masters and all these things. And she said she saw a website, pro website, not not anti yoga. It was all about Kundalini, mm -hmm. and it, and she said at the very top it had these snakes and this big warning about Kundalini is dangerous. Mm -hmm. And this was from people who are teaching it. Yep. Mm -hmm. They're yep. saying if you practice this, be prepared right. for strange things that happen to your body and mind and everything. Wow. The, the sad thing is that it's not just Kundalini. Mm -hmm. Like um, it's yoga. Period. And yeah. and so teachers. You know, instructors, they're given this this class kind of uh, syllabus, you know, ex exercise A, or, or I shouldn't say exercise, but they think it is, pose A to pose Z. You need mm. to get through this in an hour or an hour and a half format, and that's it. Talk a little bit about feelings. You know, they teach you chants. You don't really know what you're chanting, mm. right. you know, mm. um, you don't understand all of it, right? You don't understand the emptying your mind. So we're going to get into all of that. So they're really, wow. you know, so that's you. This is, these are all pictures of me oh, in, wow. in the practice. So, um, I was definitely very devoted and, and this is going into, um, this was my first day at my school and the school, I don't want to plug, you know, mm. but yeah. it was a blank school of medita yoga and meditation. And the two main teachers there, one of them, um, his name was Mahesh. And Mahesh is a prominent name in the meditation world. And it is said that his great, great, great grandfather, I believe, was the Maharishi Mahesh, who basically taught how to get into transcendental meditation. So this is three generations. Which is using yoga to get there. Using the methodology okay. of Patanjali's eight limb path. We'll get mm. into that. Okay. So I'm here. And the reason I ended up here is because, again, I was teaching um, at all the prominent, the, the high end clubs. So like your club sport, Equinox, um, the studio, um, yoga works. You know, I was the one of the teachers to this day. If you look me up online, you're going to see, you know, 
blessings win or blessings robertson win and it's going to immediately take you to mm. yoga wow. and i was a very sought after teacher i'm not patting my back i'm just you know yeah. telling you how deep i was into these things yeah, you're so, a credible source to talk about this right <clears throat> question that yes. green book yes. i see that stick with the snake wrapped around we see the this mm -hmm. so we see this in medical oh, logos what is that so caduceus. yes and so there's there's two ways to look at it it's off it's the serpent that heals you know um, Moses th exactly mm -hmm. Moses's staff huh. that healed the people who had been bitten by the snake mm -hmm. but then it's also been taken in in the Gnostic world and it's it's it, it represents um, secret knowledge right. it's well, a rebranding yes yeah I'll tell you the Moses right. uh, the the rod with the serpent on there and Moses they didn't have two and it didn't, it didn't have true. wings that's yeah. the caduceus when you look it up yeah. that's um, Mercury holds that in his hand, and it That's says right. that he's yeah. the guide of the. the he he's the, so he's the god of the underworld. Of, yeah, the god of the underworld. Yeah. He heals the the wicked people and stuff. Like yeah. he's the guide of the. And he dead has the wings and, on his helmet. Yeah. 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 And the so these are some it. of the textbooks yeah. th that are on my table. This and this this uh, yoga journal was actually made by my yoga guru mm. at the time that I was under. Um, and that would be the Kundalini Shakti. Okay. So she is representative of that snip serpent that you see, the two ah, serpents, okay, right? Okay. So one is Shakti and one is Shiva. Yeah. And you're, you want the Kundalini energy to rise up your spine, which wow. leads to which Samadhi. starts yeah. in your crotch area. Yes. <laughs> so we'll get into this. We'll get into this. <laughs> I mean, I wanna, that's, this. that's really what you're saying. I want to so, add, yes. I, I wanted to describe what that is because I... I didn't have my train of thought, but yeah. that's the caduceus held by Mercury, and it says that he's the god uh, or the guide of the dead, protectors of liars, merchants, mm -hmm. thieves. Like these are as a protector of wicked, of wicked. and the yeah. guide of the dead. Right. And they're using and that the beginning here. stage of your sexuality to your mind. Yes. And it's like, yes. it's very purposeful. It's it's very perverted. Um, so you'll see some of the, we'll get into this, but this is just like a, a synopsis, kind of like, this is a day in the life of me in yoga. I think it's interesting that there is so much serpents in it. Serpents behind the Shiva, serpents mm -hmm. on here. Mm -hmm. And it's all about inviting the serpent to your crown chakra. Yep. and. And in that the Bible, might not sound alarming, mm -hmm. but we as Christians do have a, a higher yeah. vantage point. We yeah. we know who that serpent is, and right, you see right. all around Satan the world people Lucifer. are right. worshiping dragons and serpents and things like that. Right, it's and so I, and, in your face. and the thing to remember is that there is the gospel, and then there is the counterfeit gospel. Right. And God is the creator. And when I say God, I like to point out that I'm talking about Yahweh. I'm yes. not talking about, I'm talking about Ruach. I am not talking about any other God, Shiva, mm. you know, Buddha, none of that. Um, and what he does is he takes whatever God has and he just perverts it. Yep. The Shekinah glory, which we are the temple of God, right? So this body is really designed in a sort of way that the Jewish temple was laid out. Exactly. That the That the most holy place was literally the place and seat of God. Yes. And it's very interesting to me that there's a snake that mm -hmm. wants to sit in the in very the temple, seat of your God. Seat. Yes. Yeah. In the holy, the, the highest and, and, the, and the holiest of holy. So... <clears throat> This is um, where the journey really starts to take a turn. So basically, I was uh, a, a very pronounced teacher, very you know well-known teacher back in the Bay Area. And um, a friend of mine was saying, oh, I'm going to do a cleanse, you know. And, you know, Seven Day Adventists, we're into health and healing mm. and cleansing. So I was like, sure, I'll, you know, I'll do it with you. And I get introduced to this system called Pancha Karma. Mm. Pancha yeah. means five karma meaning the the works and the things that you can do to cleanse or to rid um your body of mm. and so the the ayurvedic practice practitioner um said to me i really you know like that you understand you know the yoga postures and she's saying it in a way that i think she assumed because i was reading up on it but mm. and able to discuss it with her but i don't think she understood that i didn't know the source mm. oh, okay. but she says to me but you need real training you need authentic training and so she says i want you to go and learn where i learned and so she recommended this school and that's how i ended up at the ashram because she wanted to hire me on her staff to be able to prescribe yoga and ayurvedic medicine to her 
you know, clients. In California, but in she California. wanted you to go to India. Right. So yeah. I go feeling honored. Yeah. You're like, oh, a doctor thought so well of me. Like, right. you know, mm -hmm. so I'm like, let's do this. So I leave my family and I go to India for two months. And I end wow. up at this ashram. And this is a yoga shala. So all of our um, classes were held between this yoga shala and another yoga shala. And um, this is basically a holy place. And what you can't see is that there are deities on some of these. There's one here. There's another here, here, here. Um, and even those weren't alarms to me because, honestly, they're ubiquitous in our culture. Yep, you right. go to a furniture Good store, luck, Charles, you can pick yeah. it up. Yeah. yeah, you know, I, yeah. yeah, I and you're like, in I'm in house. another country and this is what they believe. So yeah. you dismiss it. Yep. And that's the thing, too, is that I really think we should be careful as um, travelers what mm. we bring back home. Yes. Hey, this is yeah. so yeah. true. And I have this really weird yeah. short uh, yeah. real world experience. My parents were missionaries when they first got married. And I remember we had a fish tank and we had a big, huge like library and they had brought in home a Buddha. Mm -hmm. and the Buddha was sitting by the fish tank and we kept killing the fish in the fish tank. And it wow. was really strange. Uh, and I remember like thinking like as a kid, I always remember like, why, why do they have this God that's sitting there on the shelf? And wow. kind of interesting. Mm. And then this is my class schedule. And um, it basically shows you all of the training that I went through all the different disciplines and if you, you'll take note 5 45 a.m i have to be in that yoga wow. shala and at that time i do something called karma yoga and so they believe there's when you say yoga this is another misconception people have when you say yoga people think it's just the asana the posture practice it's not mm. yoga has several different branches of, hmm. of of rites and rituals the meditation the sort of the karma yoga sweeping up making sure it's clean so can i point this out yes what if people had this kind of tenacity with religion mm -hmm. I, I agree a hundred percent the bible or something like this hundred percent you know what yeah. i mean yeah. where, where would we be if we people yeah. oh whatever you guys are just you know making a big deal about it yeah. or you want us to study the bible all day yeah people do this yeah. all day mm -hmm. yeah. and i think it's really important to point out that People are comfortable, society is comfortable trashing Christians yeah. for their beliefs and their doctrine. Um, they're very critical, even amongst ourselves, we'll say, I'm not practicing Christianity because so-and-so was, was not Christian, yeah. what treated me poorly. Yeah. But in reality, there's so many other religions and so many different adherents to those religions and no one ever comes for those people for being bad right. within yeah, that religion. Yeah, point. they think that's it's cool and they're like, you know, oh, good job, you yeah. know, being so devoted. Yeah, and there's no criticism, it, there's mm. respect, but yeah. Christianity, you get pushed back. If somebody yeah. doesn't adhere to the schedule, yeah. they don't like, oh, I'm not gonna be a yogist yeah. because of this yeah. or whatever, yeah. 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 yeah, so we had karma, karma yoga, Asana practice. Asana means actually doing the physical pro, uh, um, uh, yoga. And then at 8.15, we would have breakfast. But during breakfast, it's not peaceful because you're studying. You know, you're scarfing food and you're, you're literally doing your assignments. And hmm. it's just really, it's almost like medical school. Well, like no joke. Crammed into it's this. super yeah. crammed. And it's all new. You know, it's not anything you even have heard of. You don't really know this stuff. Um, and then you go into Ayurveda, which is the sister science of yoga. Mm -hmm. And it's basically nature worship and using mm. herbs and plants to heal you. And then Yoga Nidra at 10 o'clock to 11.15, you'll see that slash. Yoga Nidra is a meditation style where basically you're um, introduced to hypnosis. Wow. Oh, wow. Um, and then teaching practicum uh, uh, at 11, you see teaching practicum asana methodology. This is where they start to, in, instead of you doing the postures, then they, they have you sit and they start to open up the literature to you. But the liter literature is redacted. It, it does not have all the, the deities dark. Mm. and the dark. It, you don't get any of that. Mm. And then they have what's called non-contact hours from 2.30 to 4. And so this is you being abstemious. This is self-isolation. And that's really key to the practice of yoga mm. because people who practice the, the actual true yogis traditionally, they would remove themselves from society, become hermits, become yeah. hermits ascetics. Yes. And they would just be by themselves. Mm. And then 415, you start at, and again, even the names, Shakti Whitehall. Yeah. Shakti is the Kundalini right. serpent. Mm. Right. Um, 
415, you start pranayama, and this is a breathing practice. This is how you control the breath, okay? And that's super important because you don't have to do yoga, the physical yoga. You could do the yoga breathing and still get the kundalini. Is that, is that what we keep seeing popping up, the breath work? Yep, breath that, work. That's basically connected to yoga? That's absolutely what it is. Wow, interesting. But it's not isolated to uh, Hinduism. You find it in all cultures. Mm. You even find it in Wicca. So when they're casting their spells, they don't just say, you know, Alakazam, Alakazoom, or I don't know what their spells are, <laughs> but they say it with intention and they say it with breath. Mm. So it has to be like intention mm. and breathy because there's power, there's life in the breath. And when you mm. think of this, wow. What did God do to animate us? That's right. He Light breathed. Breath. So mm. what does Spoke. Satan do? Mm -hmm. He perverts the breath. Yeah. Yeah. So then you go to a small break, then you go to yoga philosophy, and this is where you're introdu introduced to Patanjali's <laughs> Yoga Sutras. And so he was considered the modern fa the father of modern yoga. Um, 6 p.m. to 6.45, this is meditation, and they would we would have a roving cycle. Um, Bhagwan Sri Rajneesh was a famous, I should say infamous yogi who came to the United States after being kicked out of India because his practices in meditation were inducing, you know, demonic spirits, orgies and oh. things like that. He took over part of Oregon and almost succeeded in like having this whole community take over a, a segment of, of a county. Like oh, a wow. sex cult. Yeah, something. it was. It was a drug sex cult. I mean, there's a documentary about it. I'm not making this stuff up. You can find wow. it. Yeah. Bhagwan Sri Rajneesh. He's also known as Osho. So um, the reason it says bring your fla flashlight is because you're walking home in the, in the dark. And so, you know, you're, you're in this this is a lifestyle mm -hmm. then on saturdays god's holy sabbath i would be waking up at 6 15 going to do karma yoga again sweeping In and the then Shiva hall. which which they make you work yes interesting yes they make you work on the day that the lord says rest interesting and then you're ready again to do your asana and so you do asana from 6 30 to 8 35 again that's the physical form of yoga and then the rest of the day you spend studying. Sunday is what they call holiday, but you really don't have a day off because if you take holiday, you'll be backlogged and you won't be ready. It's the day of the sun. <laughs> I was yeah. about to off. say, I find that really interesting that because because sun worship is huge in yoga yeah right yeah like we're gonna poses get into toward that. the sun mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. um and so like, if you look in history you can find this that back in the day after the jews you know and gentiles came together and became christians the Sabbath was still kept yep. according yeah. to the Ten Commandments. Even in Africa. Right. Right, exactly. And and so then eventually uh, it was the Roman power in, in collaboration with the Roman Catholic Church that started introducing Sunday. Sunday was more popular. Sabbath mm -hmm. wasn't as popular. And boom, things and shifted to Sunday. And wasn't it Constantine was, yeah. he mm -hmm. was Christian. Uh, he was converted, but he still was sympathetic toward the people who worship the, pa the, sun, the pagans the pagans, the pagans so worship the sun mm -hmm. yeah. so he just did it to get, appease both, appease parts, both yeah. parties and mm -hmm. convert the pagans so to speak and so it's interesting that we have that history of the sun and sunday mm -hmm. and you see it here again that sunday is the day that is kept even yeah. in, in yoga even, yep. one day mm -hmm. you're gonna yeah. and they make you work like there's no yeah. other work any other day right, right. Like, work right. six <laughs> days day. but on sunday yeah yeah so that was our rigorous schedule every day. And this is basically basically how I can introduce you to how, what was actually happening in the background of my study, which was that I was opening portals. So this is a photo of me um, walking through these doors. Um, you would have to walk through this path in order to get to one of the places that we would study. And so this colorful myriad is kind of like, if you could visualize, um, the path to enlightenment. There's a, mm. all these colorful things. There's all these distractions, but somewhere in the end, you're going to get enlightened. Don't worry. Mm. Just keep going. Mm. Just keep going. Right. All the shock yes. like imagery. Yes. Mm -hmm. and nothing shock is, you know, mm. by chance, you know, everything mm. is very, very specific, um, intentional. And then this is one of their Ayurvedic, um, spas that you could go to. And so you could get these treatments. And so people go, um, to India to this particular part because 
Ayurveda, the pseudoscience part, is, is, is at top-notch level here. It was invented here. So these, these centers are there for people who maybe aren't coming for yoga, but they're coming for relaxation. So does that like the cupping and all that kind of stuff is all so looped into that? It's, it's um, the, um, the, the panchakarma. The the, yeah. That's acupuncture. That's Accurate. Chinese oh, traditional. That's Chinese. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, but the, the, this is more like for panchakarma, the five different types of cleansings. And, and in, in the yoga sutras, um, they talk a lot in the, the Garanda, uh, is it called the Garanda Samhita? They talk a lot about cleansing. There's a lot of ritual cleansing. And to them, it's really important. And so there's a lot of manipulation that goes on um, to the rectum. And mm. so um, there are very wild, bizarre rituals for cleansing specifically that area. So things like putting a turmeric stock up there and what? manipulating it. That and, is so unhealthy. Or getting into a ho one of the, the holy rivers and um, sucking in the water and pushing it out. Like basically doing an enema repeatedly. Wow. There's a lot of manipulation to that zone of the body because they consider it one of the gateways to Shakti. Wow. So remember, the dormant snake is down there because a lot of the rituals in the pagan um, religions dating all the way back to Egypt, there was this belief that, you know, the rectum and uh, was a place of, of um, access or a portal to enlightenment. Wow. That's so um, strange. And there were wow. a lot of um, homosexual um, orgies and things of that nature mm -hmm. as part of the rites and the systems for like Baal worship. Alistair yeah. Crowley, when he would do um, satanic ritualistic mu magic and when he was writing um, sex, blood, magic, he found that they, he would go through these lengthy um, things to get people um, Ritual. yeah, rituals, do yeah. rituals to get the demons in. And then if he actually just brought into this circle some other male and did some homosexual act, it was like cutting a shortcut rather than doing all those things to right. the demonic mm. Right. It's a direct source instead of just doing the other things. Yeah. Wow. And that's yeah. why he participated in that. He was a uh, very upfront bisexual um, because he said that that gave him power. So interesting yeah. that, that God specifically says, like there's not a lot God says about mm -hmm. sex in the Bible. He says, don't do bestiality, don't do homosexuality, mm -hmm. and don't do it from the behind. And yeah. so it's like God, they, they, they have this counterfeit religion For where, everything. oh, you can find enlightenment here, but then mm -hmm. we're going against everything the Bible says. Right, yeah. and that, that is true. And, and the other thing is that people like to focus on it being man and man. But when God says, don't do sodomy, yep. that means yeah. don't do there that to a woman either. Right. Yes. Right. Yeah. right. I agree. So it's yeah. not just male on male. It's, the, yeah. it's that act, yeah. period. We, we have a, a podcast called the Little Life Studios podcast. And in season one, I talked to a married couple. He is a physician and she is a therapist. And I asked them any question under the sun about what the Bible says about sex. And he's very clear from a medical perspective. It is unhealthy. It is yeah. bad for you. You should not practices even if you're not a christian you said there's so many medical reasons why yeah. you should not be involved in and this. they're pretty obvious yeah. it's a mm. one way right. yeah and that muscle once it's gone there's nothing really you can do to rejuvenate that muscle oh, my. Mm. Yeah. so you're looking at a life of diapers all right so this is some of the uh coursework to give you um an impression of what types of yoga i had to learn so ashtanga ashtanga is known as raja yoga and that is an eight limb path. Um, and you can see that on the far left. There's several different series that go into it. You know, sequence A with Surya Namaskar, which is what you were talking about, the sun worship. Mm. Um, and that would cover these first two pages. This one is the menstrual series. So um, this is supposed to alleviate pain if a woman is going through PMS, mm. having um, cramps. And then there's the Pawanamuktasana series. And so I had to learn, learn three different versions of this series. And this is more on the therapeutic side. And all of it has to do with breath. And this one is more focused on the joints. So it's very minute movements, hmm. um, but centered focus. It's something that they call drishti. It's your concentration and it's small, subtle movements. And then um, that would be these two. And then this is for my Ayurvedic Iyengar um, a training. And this was learning how to do sequences specific for a disease. Mm. So I had a client who had psoriasis. And so I had to create my own sequence. 
And so you'll see that I start with um, Savasana. You can't really see it completely here, which is a corpse pose. You lie on the floor wow. as if you were dead. There's symbology and there's reason wow. for that because it's the reincarnation myth. And mm. then you go into the chanting. And then um, here you teach people how to breathe. And, um, you know, each sequence basically would take someone and supposedly cure them from having psoriasis. Mm. All um, right. So question. Mm -hmm. Because some of these poses, it's like that kind of a stretch is yeah. a really nice stretch. If you're yeah. like working out like crazy, yeah. it's not necessarily the the pose that is necessarily no, the problem, no, no, right? Yeah. No. So there's a difference. Context. Um, yeah. There's, you know, the body is made to move. The body yeah. does need stretching. The the body does need exercise. It is fine to stretch. A lot of a lot of these poses are similar to the ones that you would find in gymnastics or ballet mm -hmm. or just your general gym fitness mm -hmm. class, you know. Mm -hmm. um, but the problem is that when they are um, put in this particular sequence and under the construct of yoga, it is a, a nonverbal language to the spirit yeah. realm and it is a devotion to the whole pantheon of their of their gods and their deities yes. so what if somebody says what if i just do something out of sequence just yeah. one like for example i saw the leg raises i do leg raises for i know i do abs, too that's why i asked know? Yeah. yeah no i mean yeah. this, this so, has this is literally there's a breath there's a prayer there's okay, a chant, okay. there's so a there's whole, a method with it that yes, comes with it it's yes. not necessarily that i just bent over and touched no, my toes no right. like so, yes. you're not going to get possessed just doing <laughs> sure. regular stretching so so yeah. what if what if um you know i just want to ask the right questions for yeah. someone who might be watching <clears throat> what if somebody says well i'm going to do this particular pose i'm into yoga but i'm not doing all the chanting and everything like mm -hmm. you just said i just want to do it for the sake of the stretching yeah so we're going to get into that. Okay. Okay. We're going to get into that because again, there's there's difference. There's a difference between the stretches that you would do for normal physical, you know, mm -hmm. relief from tight muscles, and then there's this this prescription, and this is a, a, a worship and a prescription. Mm -hmm. So these are some of the textbooks that um, we were um, trained in. Asana again is is. Um, the physical practice mudra is when they do everything with their hands so there's oh. these hand signals right mm -hmm. that's mudra all of this is sign language to the spirit realm huh mm -hmm. and then yogic management of common diseases this tells you you know they believe that people are we're not created by god of creation from dirt we're created from cosmos and and the, the cosmological being has put certain things in us because of our ancestors and it's just complex and convoluted and confusing but basically you have three what they call doshas three heat you know because they believe in elements so like mm. water right. earth yeah. you know same as in witchcraft exactly yeah. so it's that that is describing that then mudras this is specifically you know yoga for the hands um and then this is the guy that i was talking about um that osho who took over a county in Oregon. And so he collected, what he did is he went um, through all the religions and all the continents in the world, and he sought out what do other religions do in order to transcend and go into the spirit realm. And so he collected over 200 and I think 68 meditations. Hmm. Um, and so this book was given to us for us to, you know, take in and teach to our, our, our students. Um, the Yoga Sutras, that would be Patanjali, you know, the father of mo modern yoga. And then this is more about drishti. This is about y your, your state of mind. Um, these are the mantras that we were, we were taught. And so for people who don't understand, mantras are incantations to the yeah. spirits. Mm -hmm. And there are requests, they are first homage to Brahman, the ultimate deity in their world, um, in their religion. But a mantra is saying, I want to yoke my spirit with you, Atman, you know, um, uh, Brahman, and any other deity that I you know subscribe to that i want to worship and so when you read this like the first one om sarvasham sebastir baba tu you know um when you read this it sounds peaceful the way they've trans translated it let there be health let there be peace mm -hmm. let there be wholeness let there be celebration but 
you don't understand what celebration is in the dark realm versus what God intended our and celebration. And look how to be. <laughs> subtle and deceptive it is. Let there be. Who yes. said that? Let there God. be light. Yeah. Right. Genesis. True. Yeah, so you could read this as a Christian and be like, oh, this is just like, you know, quoting the Bible. Right. Okay, so I have a theory on yes. this. <clears throat> when God created Lucifer, um, he created him to be the the one that really told the rest of the people about who God was, right? He was the in light fact, bearer. That was his job, right? Yeah. He was yeah. the light bearer. And, and so God and his purposes would bring Jesus into his council and Satan's upset that he can't go into the council with God and everything, right? And then that, that whatever they were planning to do, they told Lucifer. Lucifer then would have told the other angels. The other angels would have went out to the creation and told everybody mm -hmm. else, right? So Lucifer is designed mm -hmm. to tell you something about God. He cannot operate out outside of the way that God designed him, all he did was bent it. Yeah. No. So he's still operating like God intended him to build. Yeah. He's just bent He's just twisted. He's just twisted. It's a Look different what narrative. says. Lead me yep. from the... False. Are you going to read that? Yeah. Lead me from the false to the truth, um, from uh, darkness to light, from death to deathlessness. So that's that whole theory of reincarnation, right? right. But it is. That's literally like the story of the gospel. Yep. Like, lead me from... False to truth, darkness yeah. to light, from death it, to it's eternal almost life. Almost like the prayer that when they asked Jesus, "How do we pray?" Right? Mm -hmm. yeah. You know, let your will be done. Yes. You know, peace yes. on earth, and you know, same same yeah. thing. So these mantras are things that literally we had to memorize, and oh. you had to open every single class with this mantra. Wow. You know, you'd have to sing this. And the reason is because you're setting the tone and you're inviting the people who you're worshiping, or not the spirits, not people. Mm -hmm. You're inviting the spirits into the practice and the devotion because you're about to do a seance. Just like starting church with worship music. Yes, mm -hmm. exactly. And inviting the Holy yeah. Spirit to exactly. be a part of your, your organization. Yeah. Uh -huh. So, um, like I said, 12 to 14 hours of training, you know, meditation. Um, this is when we're doing theory. So this is all the philosophy that's involved in yoga. Um, this is some of the Iyengar. This is for people who are uh, disabled maybe or elderly and mm -hmm. they need additional accoutrements like straps and, mm -hmm. and blocks. So they teach you to, ha to even address that population. Wow. Um, this is more of the same. Um, so there are inversions or different um, postures that are said to activate different chakras. So they're teaching you the ins and outs. This is me leading class. Um, and again, this is, this is when they're, they're teaching you, um, this is more like, um, uh, uh, student led and this is, um, this you know, is all teacher in led. India? this is all India. Wow. And like all these people are not from India. Nope. Well, two <laughs> people were, two people in my, in my group were from India, right. but n everyone else was from everywhere. Wow. Yeah. yeah. So again, these are my, um, certifications. So you know that I'm not, you know, just. Yeah pretending to say that I did things. Um, so that's my core power yoga um, certification. That's more of an Ashtanga style. Uh, this is the school of yoga and meditation. And this is holistic yoga teacher training with an Ayurvedic approach. And this one is yoga therapy teacher training. Um, and so I was so into this. These are my kids. Mm -hmm. And again, wow. they're naturally flexible too. Like I've never met anyone who can put their knees together and... Go that you know, direction and go that wow. direction my kids were naturally flexible and so for them it was easy and they would see me practicing and 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 getting ready for my class you know because you you create your own sequences and they would imitate me mm. and so here i am indoctrinating my Training children wow. right um so this is just to show you how devoted i was and again i was teaching at the best clubs um and and th this is like part of the, the, the sun salutation series. And I included this because here you are slithering like a snake on the right, floor, wow. bowing, bowing down, down, bowing down, down to the sun salutation. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you're getting ready. This is a transitional pose, but you're getting ready to come up into the cobra pose. Mm. Wow. So the serpent pose. You're a snake. So my life was yoga from medical practices to teaching. I was sold out. And in the far left, you can see me doing an, an Ayurvedic treatment. This is part of the pancha karma. You can see me holding my hands Mantra, in the, the in the mudras. mudras on the bottom that's actually my mom um and she was getting a basti mm -hmm. and basti is where they put a medical oil on your knees to quote unquote rejuvenate it um here i'm doing corrections on a student here this is you know yoga cooking classes or yo yoga classes and cooking classes this is me really studying and this is 
uh, this was required every Friday night. We would go to the beach and meditate at sunset. Wow. And I had no idea <laughs> that it was sun worship. Well, I noticed. In I this had no idea. Picture right there on you your were just shirt. Like, There's oh. a picture. Yeah, that's of a one God. of the deities. Yeah, yeah. you're wearing yeah. the God on your shirt. Everybody yeah. loves sunsets. We're just out there enjoying. Yeah, and, 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 I just. Uh, you're not you know, just super just, naive. Like I, yeah. as a Christian, I had a collection of statues. I loved religious art, even from when I was agnostic. I had candles of Jesus and all this. And when I became a Christian, I still had that because it was beautiful art to me. I love religious yeah. art from, I had Buddha, I had goats, I had Jesus and all these Catholic things and everything because I just thought it was beautiful. And I, and somebody pointed it out and I was like, well, I don't worship it. It's just right. art to me, mm -hmm. but I'm still inviting that thing into yep. my house. It's mm -hmm. still a, a beacon or a, you know, some kind of signal to the spirit world. Well, I'm allowed yep. in. He's got the idol. That I'm here. okay yeah. to not listen to what God said. I yep. have no idols, you yep. know? Yeah. So um, I was just completely ignorant that I was practicing, um, practicing spiritualism. And so again, you could see me this one. The second one up top is um, one of the structures in Hanuman temple, the monkey temple. And below, this is me at the monkey temple after the priest took me into a back room and and blessed me with a dot on your forehead oh yeah. and yeah with, put the dot Can and open my means? third eye so this is the third eye is supposed to be the seat of knowledge mm. but this is also the place where god says this is our seal right so this is where he puts frontal lobe. our frontal wow. lobe isn't the third eye on the dollar is that the yes. trying? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, um, you know like i said i there i this is not about the people of india again i love the people, I, I, I don't, I don't see a difference between me and them right. just because they're Indian. You can ask any of my Indian friends. They're like, wow, you know more than I do about, mm -hmm. you know, India or whatever. And it's really, I don't mean to sound, you know, like someone who's extorting the culture or anything that's, it has nothing to do with that. I love people period. That's like right. I'm a big mix of myself. So it doesn't mm -hmm. bother me. Um, this is one of the yoga nidra classes it's one of the meditations and she's using a tuning fork on my forehead to open up my third eye uh, wow. um, so, so can you explain quickly what is the third eye because i just so brought we're it gonna up get, like we're gonna get, gonna get there we're gonna okay get there. okay i'm and really again, curious you know completely sold out this was this was who i was yeah um, and again, I just want to say, I love the people it has nothing to do with it my point is that no one ever told me yeah. that I was participating in mysticism. Hmm. They, I never got that option to say, yes, I'm in or no, I'm, I'm good. Right. And, and again, I see the people of India as my brothers and sisters that God created. Mm. So it has nothing to do with the people. Um, and so how did my world come to a complete halt where I started to stop and really look at, you know, what was I doing? God allowed COVID mm -hmm. and in the stillness of COVID and the extreme despair, you know, I was let, I was living in spiritualism. I was, I was practicing yoga. I was, um, under the guidance of a spiritual guru. I was doing Ayurveda. I was completely in this, this mystical world, but still claiming Christianity. And God said, no. And so when he shut down the, the clubs that I worked out, worked at, I literally had to stop and look at everything and dig deep because everything that I thought was bringing me peace had led me to just severe anxiety, um, no sense of peace, dysregulated, um, like uh, I wouldn't say deities, but I would say demons in my home, um, apparitions, um, spiritual harassment, um, spiritual attacks, involuntary kundalini i ended up in the er um uh, one attack dropped me down and um whatever spirit was was banging my head on the floor like for what felt like two minutes mm. and i could hear my husband saying what's wrong what happened what heck screaming but i you know i are could you hear, actually hitting yes, your head on the i floor. could hear mm. him but i couldn't i was yeah, taken no. over like by possession? the spirit yeah i was wow. taken over by a spirit and when i finally was able to talk he says i'm taking you to the er i said they won't believe me yeah my fear was you know they'll probably write me off yeah they're not going to understand yeah. what yeah. i've been just delving give me some in. drugs yeah, yeah they'll put you in a mental like health hospital. and i cried and i cried oh, wow. and i i mean god 
showed me so many things and the truth. And so this is where I start to see where this this oppression, this demonic oppression, and why it came. Did you ever have any discussions with other teachers? Did they have these kind of similar experiences? With All the teachers I knew were depressed. Wow. So I wasn't. Really, I wasn't about to start talking to them about my life. Really, you know, and it's not a judgment, but all the teachers I knew, I didn't know a single happy. Because why people get teacher. into this is to get centered and yeah. calm yeah. and this and that, yeah. and it's yes. like to hear from a teacher themselves, like. Yeah, this didn't bring peace. No, I think people just become really phlegmatic and they're just very like they they're they're okay with the the state of this deep darkness because it's karma, you know, it's mm. it's reincarnation and and if we don't cleanse ourselves and work it out in this lifetime, then we're going to be 10 times or a thousand times worse in the next. And so you subscribe to this lie and you live in this torture and you justify it by the doctrine. It doesn't wow. make sense. Have you ever heard of the guy Stephen Bancars? Yeah, yeah. So when I'm when I'm hearing his story and your story, you guys were very prominent figures mm -hmm. and and had a voice in this community. And I just praise God that he got your attention because think of if he never got your attention. Right. How many you were an evangelist for Satan? Yep. Basically, mm -hmm. yep. Mm -hmm. how many people have, would have been like, "Well, Blessing's yeah. a Christian. Yeah. She does it." Well, so you're well, a Christian. Okay, you yeah, know? I was. Yeah, I was raised Christian. But you were a Christian throughout this the whole yoga time. Class. Oh yeah. yeah, I didn't. I was. I was deceived. Wow. I didn't know that I was serving another god. Wow. Um, so yeah. So COVID, it, it was a blessing in disguise, and God allowed it, and it, it really brought me. It, he. He leveled me. I mean, just, I was not myself. Mm -hmm. And I went straight to the Bible and thank God for my, like my niece, because mm -hmm. she was there. She was the only practicing Christian in our home, Seven Day Adventist. My husband and I have different faiths. We're both Christian. Um, like I said, you know, my yoga community, everything just basically was done. And he started to unveil why I was spiritually oppressed. And so here you see how I had all these idols in my life and I didn't even realize it. And he literally starts taking them all out of my life one by one. And he starts to let me see mm. what is really behind all these things that I mm. was practicing. And the source of truth and the authority is for me and for the whole world, whether they know it or not, is the Bible. Amen. And it says, you shall not have or excuse me, you shall have no other gods before me. You shall not make for yourself a carved image, any likeness of anything that is in heaven above or that is in the earth beneath or that is in the water under the sea or the earth. Excuse me. You shall not bow down to them nor serve them. Mm. And I didn't realize that I was doing all of this. Mm. And I didn't understand why this was even a commandment, really, you know, because I, I mean, I, I had some experiences. I did go to Catholic school um, for junior high and college university. And I saw these things and I felt really uncomfortable in their churches, but I didn't really understand the complete significance of it. Mm. And this is where I think it's important that in order to identify the counterfeit, you really have to know the original That's doctrine. Right. And so the Bible is that. It's the authority. So the whole point of this isn't that I'm picking on, again, I'm not picking on Hinduism because this is just a small capsule of all the other pagan religions. I'm just more familiar with this one so mm -hmm. I can speak on this. And so I take you back to the fall of Lucifer, Isaiah 14, so we get to know why is this even important? How you are fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning, how you are cut down to the ground, you who weakened the nations. Mm. That's super important. Remember that. For you have said in your heart, I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will also sit on the mount of the congregation on the farthest sides of the north. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will be like the most high. So you see a progression of I, 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 wow. and Satan declares his goal, and it's to be like God. Which God? Yahweh. Thank Yahweh. you. So the great controversy really is about after Satan gets ex expelled from heaven, it's basically all out war between he and Jesus. And that is how the last 6,000 years have played out. 
And so I will give you an encapsulation, but before we go there, Revelation 12, 9 tells us the great dragon, listen to the terminology, the names that they give him. Mm. The great dragon, that serpent of old called mm. the devil and Satan who deceives the whole world. He was cast to the earth and his angels were cast with him. So what I found in all of my research studying world religions, including Hinduism, is that the counterfeit gospel is basically the doc doctrine of deception. And there's basically eight principles that I found that every single one of them have. And the first one, like I just showed you, is reincarnation. The second one is that you will be as God. So mm -hmm. whether you're talking about like the Yoruba, Ifa, this is like the... Um, uh, people who were brought from from Africa through slavery and ended up here um, and and they were practicing it's still a prominent religion amongst um, Ifa believers they believe as well that the, the spirit reincarnates they believe that they will be you know like God and that they just need to tap into this these chakras they use the same language uh -huh. um, you know they need to have idol worship um, they they have the counterfeit god. You know, Satan presents himself as Brahman oh. or Osho uh, Oshunomare. Um, these are just different the main yeah the universe, um, the cosmos. You'll also see angel worship. You'll see nature worship, and you'll also see ancestor worship. And why that's important is because. It's the glue that holds it all together. Mm -hmm. If you don't have answer worship in this, what ends up happening is you'll just be scared mm -hmm. because these de demons won't be able to present themselves, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. in a way that's comfortable in yeah. the form of your dead ancestor. Oh, I see. You okay. see? So, yeah. so Robert Caldini um, has written some books on the on how to influence people. In fact, some of the top companies in the world um, subscribe to his like six ways of, of like basically. The, the strongest tie you could ever do to influence someone is family. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and that's exactly what he's doing. are using that same method to yep. influence people. It's like, you're going to trust your family. Why yep. Why are spiritualism, why is the family showing up? Yep. No. You know yep. what I mean? In your case, yep. you want to, you wanna, you know, yeah. reconnect with your dad. And my why dad's there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Why is that experience yeah. so strong? Because if, if there weren't that piece then they would just scare the daylights out of you. You would have yeah. a clear understanding yeah. that this was... Yeah, somebody's lying to me. Yeah. But if they can say, oh, well, yeah. I'm your sister that passed away in that car crash. Yeah. And... And they know all the details. They, they look do. like yeah. them. They yeah. sound like them. They, I don't know. Maybe they smell like them. Yeah. They know everything because there's monitor... The Bible tells us there's monitoring spirits, right? There's there's these these these... A third of the angels were cast out, and yeah. they are immortal until Jesus comes, returns right. in his second um, uh, appearance. But the, the reality is, without that, none of this would make sense to us. None of us would be comfortable with it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. True. So the big question is, how could I have practiced yoga without really knowing that I was involved in witchcraft? And I think this spells it out. Um, in the Garanda Samhita, it's one of the ancient texts, um, uh, like the scriptures for them in the Hindu faith. Um, the asana or position of the body is described, but which technique or method to follow while in the posture is not mentioned at all. This is because the sadhana or scripture is extremely secret. Skipping down, practice and effort is made to change the activities or process of the body and the chemicals produced inside the body. Even if this is achieved by everyone who practices it, there will be those who do not understand what is happening to them. For this reason, it has been described as a secret process. Wow. Secret process. So it's secret. On purpose. On purpose. Right. And n take note, it's saying we're trying to change the process of the body. We're trying to change the chemicals produced inside of it. Wow. That's a problem because today, if you have a chemical imbalance, what do they give you? All right, chemicals. <laughs> chemicals to correct yeah. that imbalance. So you really got to be concerned about this stuff. So what is yoga? And when I was, this is something they hammered in me when I was in, in India. And it's Yoga Chitta Vritti Niroda. In the Yoga Sutras, Patanjali writes, Yoga Chitta Vritti Niroda. And it's yoga is the cessation of the modification of fluctuations of the mind. So in other words, you need to empty your mind. You need to get all of what, you know, any kind of uh, discernment you have, you need to clear it out so that yeah. we can put in what we want. 
And isn't that exactly what God's asking for us to do? We need a new mind, yeah, right? Yes. We need a new, new transformation. Heart, new mind, new heart. It's like the devil is literally looking at what God's doing and going, I'm going to do the exact same yes. thing, but over here. Because he wants to take yes. the place of God. So yeah. he wants to do the exact same thing. And that's exactly yeah. what he declared. You know, search me, O God, and know my thoughts. Yeah. Try me and know my heart and see if there be any wicked way in me and lead me on the path everlasting. That is exactly this doctrine. He's saying, I'm going to search your heart. I'm going to, and in fact, follow your heart. You know, mm. and um, and he's going to say, uh, you know, empty your mind because I am going to try you and mm. I'm going to lead you on this reincarnation path that's everlasting. Mm. Mm. So this is Patanjali, the father of modern mm. yoga. You know, he is basically um, the, the like I said, the modern um, they, they call him like the father of, the, of, of yoga body of a snake. He looks yes. like a snake to me. Yeah. So yeah. he absolutely is. Now, there's a lot of mythology. People don't really there's no birth records for him. I mean, he's just mm. kind of like this mysterious gotcha. figure. And they say that he was, you know, existed somewhere between the second and fourth century um, after Christ's birth. And he is the reincarnation or the incarnation of the serpent god in Hindu religion. Oh, wow. um, he is half snake, half human, and the Madhavali Patanjali sits on his tail with seven cobra heads. So it kind of looks like a shell on the top, but it's actually seven um, cobra heads above him. And these represent omnipresence. Um, what I really want you to pay attention to, though, are these two uh, figures here. Sun worship. You have a star. And you have a crescent moon, and that's uh, the hallmark of pagan worship. And where do you see that exact star? You see it uh, as part of the Jesuit logo. Mm -hmm. oh, yeah. That exact star, it, it, it came into being during the Dark Ages when these different Protestant mm -hmm. reformers came out, and the Jesuits were called in to be almost like a... <laughs> Like a secret service today, exactly to counterfeit the Protestants. They would infiltrate, to sabotage them. yeah, mm -hmm. infiltrate Protestant churches and mm -hmm. trying to people turn people back to, to paganism, paganism mm -hmm. and the Roman Catholic Church. Um, it's and true. so, obviously, like we see a lot of the, and I'm not speaking against um, Roman Catholic people. No. I I was baptized as a baby in a Roman Catholic church. My grandparents were Roman Catholic their entire life. My grandpa still alive is still a, a Roman Catholic. Um, I'm just pointing out their hearts are pure. Yeah, yeah. exactly. There's so mm -hmm. many beautiful Roman Catholic Christians. I'm just pointing out like what we can actually see. And this is just his history. You can just find it. Yep. Yep. So yep. I, I, I bet you if you went back in time, I mean, this is probably the symbol of Babylon. This is the symbol. We're of, going there. I mean? We're going okay. there. Exactly. So these, these demons have outlived everybody else and they're just putting their stamp on different cultures. And so when you look at this, you find out that ro yoga is actually re religion. And if you break it down, it says Hatha yoga. Ha means the sun and oh. the means the moon hatha yoga is also known as yoga asana and the primary goal is kundalini awakening the serpent now remember what he looked like right a serpent yeah. right right and that, so this is that yogic awakening and just so, like you said if we go back in time what do we find same we thing. find the same symbols with ishtar inanna venus the morning star or it's also known as Lucifer, son of the morning, mm -hmm. right? In the Bible. On her head? So I'm not sure about mm -hmm. what's on her head, but she is the main deity um, within, you know, the Babylonian and pagan worship during biblical times. And so you find her in Mesopotamia, Mesopotamia Samaria. Mm -hmm. You find her all over, spread through the Middle East. You find her. You know, she's just repeated and reinvented. Mm -hmm. And so you'll find that with many of the different um, the different gods. Mm -hmm. And so you'll also see her star in mm -hmm. that form yeah. in modern day. And you'll also see it in this form. Yep, and, yeah. People aren't just going to spontaneously come up with this stuff, guys. Yeah. Right, oh. right, yeah. right. There no, is no. an yes. author. Yeah. There is uh -huh. an author. Yeah. Okay. You can't have this kind of thread of consistency through history no. and there not be some no, sort of purpose. No, because remember, they it. didn't have technology the way that we yeah. have it. They yeah. didn't have internet. So yeah. I could literally start a religion and a cult right now yep. and i could have a, a an adherent somewhere in egypt yep. Yep. and they would be worshiping yep. with me that's not how it went down back but then. but here's mm -hmm. the beauty of god you can look at the bible and you can see through these different cultures thousands of years yep. different things you see mm -hmm. the golden thread of how god worked with all these people mm -hmm. and it's still the same today for us those yep. truths are true back then as they are today yep. and the devil's just counterfeiting this yeah. constantly wow 
So again, biblical accounts, you see the sun and the yeah. moon worship, you see that Baal, you see, you, you see that, you know, he, his, his emblem was the sun. Um, and then you also see Ashereth, the moon, and he's named many different things. Um, these are the scriptures that relate to this account. And so as we know in the Bible, you know, it talks about how God is, is telling, or, or excuse me, Paul is telling um, the Israelites, those who are basically, you know, becoming pagan and such. He says, you know, you're, you're rejoicing in these idols. You're creating these, these cakes for your, your goddess, you know. And so these are all the rebukes that, that give the depiction of what was happening in biblical times. So yoga is, an, it is ancient mysticism and nature worship. Um, so you see basically that what Kundalini actually represents is the sun and the moon coming together. And so they believe the sun is in the base, right? In, at the in crotch? The, in the crotch, basically, okay. at, the, at the coccyx bone, in the genitals, basically. And that it, there's, a, there's a channel that runs up the middle of the body and that these snakes need to connect, intertwine, and once they they meet at the top, you have this enlightening or this awakening. And so it, it, it's symbol it's it's symbological, but it's 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 also um, what they're practicing in the spirit, literally and theoretically. So wow. what are those chakras? Those those little circles that you see. So going those up? are supposedly en energy channels. So as the snake, the kundalini serpent rises up the spine, mm -hmm. it hits every one of these circular zones. And when it hits that zone, you're gonna hear a certain tone and you're gonna you're gonna feel a different like Hmm. A jolt. I find it kind of creepy when you say yeah. that you hear a different tone as if you like do. the spirits are speaking. Oh, it's no, music. No, music. I was thinking like maybe like the spirits are yeah. speaking to so, you. Like so that. when I had my Kundalini experience, um, and I didn't understand that was being worked on me with my guru, um, we did these undulations and these, you know, breath work, this pranayama. Uh -huh. And um, I felt it immediately in my general you know genitals this overpowering sensation that feels orgasmic but it's cosmic like mm. it, it it goes beyond it feels like it's going beyond you and wow. then as it climbs up and hits different points it literally makes a different sound but no one was touching you nobody's touching so, me that that is scary and then it hits your head and then you're transported to this very for me it was a black completely black place and it was quiet and it was it was peaceful but it was oddly pitch black oddly dark Oddly, that, and that's black. interesting because it starts with the sun and it goes to the moon like yeah. to light to dark yes Ooh. and so they exactly you're, you're very perceptive it's a lesser light, light to darkest and, the, dark. and so wow. the practice is also to invert so you see that he's literally turning the gospel upside yeah. down wow. you'll see that instead of being wow. enlightened yeah wow. so here's surya namaskara so a lot of people think that the the first um a series that they do is just a warm up in a yoga class, but it's actually called Surya Namaskara. It's been translating in, into English as sun salutation because it mm -hmm. sounds a lot more friendly than mm -hmm. the direct Sanskrit translation to English would be sun worship. Oh, wow. And so Surya on the far end, that is the solar de de deity in, in the Hindu faith. Um, and then these are all the ways that you, you know, praise and worship that, that deity. And this is Shiva, Lord of Yoga and yeah. Lord of Dance. You can see that the serpents are worshiping the disc in Egypt. Mm, wow. Isn't that interesting? The Urus, wow. that's what that snake is called. Right. Those are cobras. And then you can see that yoga was also practiced in Egypt. Wow. Mm. Oh, wow. And Shiva yeah. has a moon next to his yep. head. Where There's the snake. And Mm -hmm. There is the trident, you know, mm -hmm. like this is what Insane. I, because I, I was, it was so fascinating when I edited that episode with Raj, uh, Raja. yeah, who, who pointed all this out that th there's so many similarities mm -hmm. of Shiva with Satan. And these are just some of them. Oh, we're going to get into it. So from whom did yoga originate? Lord Shiva, among the great deities of Hinduism, most personifies the practice of yoga. You will see the picture of him from a temp in a, at a temple where he is seated under a tree of knowledge. And Shiva is the god of knowledge. And so he's crushing the male child. The Ringa Bell male child. 
and as you can see there's always a serpent with him and uh, then there's always a trident a pitchfork or trident say and then his uh, feet as you can see are bovine feet bovine, bovine. Cow. Oh, okay. so like cat is that what you say? Yeah. yeah like yeah. bay or something yeah and most of those temples of Dakshina Murti form of Shiva, they are built facing the south because it's a south facing feature. In other words, the devotees have to face the sides of the north. So if I will ascend the sides of the north above the clouds. We like the most high. So when a person is practicing yoga, they are linking their mind with Shiva's mind. Yes. So that came from the Book of the Dead. Yep, Book of the Dead. Wow. And so the Tibetans also have a Book of the Dead. Wow. Um, and the Bible has the Book of the Living. Exactly. The life. Yeah, why yeah. serve a God, God of, of yeah. the dead when you're, you know, God is living. So that's what you're following. You're following a practice of death. The whole goal is Crazy. to get you to kill yourself. Wow. Yeah. And that's why these and people to are depressed. that the darkness is... is is okay. A death and it's rebirth. It's a death and a rebirth because you're only going to reincarnate. To another, why yeah. wouldn't you want to die? You know? mm. So as you were just speaking, we're going into the moon uh, symbology that you see in the actual uh, Shiva. And so Chandra is the name of the moon. It's the moon deity. And you could see it on top of Shiva's head. That woman that's head is popping out of his. If you notice, she's actually a serpent. So oh. that's him in a state of Kundalini. Oh, wow. And if you notice his face, he's kind of smiling. Yeah. And his eyes are closed. Yeah, and you can see that he has a crescent moon mm -hmm. at right between his eyebrows. He also has the Chandra right up on his head. Mm -hmm. And then he has the snake on his side called the Suki Naga. Mm -hmm. And he's the serpent god. And he's he's supposedly someone who, in the Hindu mythology, this deity was um, uh, very devoted to Shiva and didn't allow him to get poisoned. It, there's a lot of convoluted mythology. But anyway, so the snake stays with him. But it's like the snake is on the brain. Yes. The snake is on, you know, yes. coming out. The snake is like literally behind him. Yep. The force mm -hmm. behind him. Yep. Wow. And so this in yoga is Ardha Chandrasana, half moon pose, and it venerates the moon. So mm -hmm. you cannot separate yoga, the physical practice, from the mm -hmm. worship because yeah. this is this is the form of that yep yeah. yeah. this is the form of that deity you cannot separate it you're you're channeling you're talking to that deity you're saying oh you know warrior lord whatever that that deity is i am paying respect to you oh. i am your devotee there's no way around it and then this is another version of chandra um, and he's riding, or she's riding in her uh, chariot. Which in our culture became Santa Claus with the reindeer. Maybe, I don't know. It could be, <laughs> it could be, because you do see this, you see this this deity in all, almost all the religions um, in, the, uh, really? in, the, in the East and also in um, Greek hmm. mythology. Oh, you see, the, I don't remember the name, but you can find this. Rudolph the Red Nose Reindeer. It feels <laughs> right. a bit like the red pill, blue pill. It's yeah. like, waking up. if you, yeah. yeah, well, it's like if you take the pill, you have to take this action. And by taking that yeah. action, if you remember that scene from yep. the Matrix, what it says is, what does this do? And he says, it disrupts the input output mm. signal mm -hmm. so that we can pinpoint you and then find you. And it's mm, yeah. like, that's what this stuff is doing. It is. The action is allowing the demonic world to pinpoint wow, yeah. you. And come and right to you. And you're making that choice. Yes. And then they're able to come exactly. in. Exactly. So yeah. these are some more uh, postures that are really sought after postures, you know, because they're pretty. Let's just be yeah, real. They're pretty yeah. to look at. Yeah. But when you actually know what Akapada Raja Patasana, excuse me, mermaid variation of King Pigeon is, you'll see that it's a Hindu god. It's a pigeon. Right. Um, and it's basically worshiping the goddess of lust and passion. Mm. Right. Yeah. I don't think it's by chance that our world is obsessed with yoga pants at this point. No. <laughs> right? No. I mean, there's a reason why mm -hmm. that those kind of clothes are worn during that kind of an activity is it really does bolster yeah. up the idea of lust. It right? is. Mm. Ekapada uh, Raja Kapotasana is hence um, an activation of the Manipura chakra. And so all of this has to do with like awakening a certain spirit. And the Kundalini spirit is a sensual, mm -hmm. cosmic mm -hmm. force, you know, mm -hmm. that increases supposedly fertility and mm -hmm. sexual arousal and enlightenment. Mm -hmm. Wow. Mm -hmm. Who right? would want all that? 
And then you have Lord of the Dance pose. There are different variations. This one, I'm, I'm, I'm basically doing somewhat of a bind. I'm taking my foot and putting it in the, in the uh, bend of my elbow. But oftentimes, you'll see it where someone's grabbing their foot with both hands behind their head. And it venerates, again, Lord Shiva, the Lord of the Dance, the Lord of Yoga. Mm. Um, Satan. <laughs> And so, you know, you move on to Anjali Mudra. A lot of people, even we do this as Christians, we'll often, we'll often go, yeah. oh, uh, thank you. Yeah. And, you know, we don't realize. Send little praying hands. Yes, yeah. praying hands. We don't realize that this is one, it's a mudra. It's another yeah. way of, of You've never seen the Bible the about putting your hands together and well, praying. No. Yeah, I've never really thought of the emoji like that before. Why isn't mm -hmm. it like this? Because mm -hmm. isn't that So they do have another pray? one like this. Oh, interesting. Have you seen that? But that, yeah, that yeah. may be honoring whatever faith does that kind of a thing, yeah. like Muslims right. Or, right. Or, or whatever, but yeah. So you, you'll see that none of this stuff is, is by accident. These are symbolic gestures and they facilitate the flow of energy um, and they really, that energy is spirit. It's, it's not like yeah. taking a Red Bull and all of a sudden you've got yeah. right. you know, more energy. We're not talking about that. It's think when you hear energy, think spirit, yeah. um, half bound Lotus pose, tree pose, um, venerates the tree, um, and the goddess Parvati, the wife of Shiva. Um, and she's the embodiment of Shakti. So you'll notice that these deities have more than one name and they have different uh, reincarnations and different avatars, you know? So mm. that's, that's something that you have to pay attention to. Wheel, wheel is supposed to be this pose um, that, that basically it opens up all the chakras. And so it's something that you do toward the end of your practice. And so usually if you're about to have a situation, it could come there at the peak when you've, you know, opened up yourself. Because, I mean, if you think of an animal in nature, not that we're that at all. Yeah, you don't expose but your belly. you don't. And mm. here you are completely exposed. belly up exposed. Yeah. Mm. In a very vulnerable state. Yeah. And that's the one that you saw in the Book of the Dead that the Egyptians are doing. Oh. Yep. Good yeah. point. And they'll even drop down to their elbows or they'll grab their ankles in that position. Yeah. Um, and you see it in, in, you know, like gymnastics as well, but gymnastics isn't, isn't this yeah. stuff. It's the yeah. same as like I do leg raises for my abs. It's not the same thing. Yeah. yeah. No, not at all. So yeah, again, anything that you see in yoga, it venerates either a deity um, an a element of nature that they draw power on that has spirits in it, or it venerates a past guru. So you're also praying to dead people. Wow. Yeah. Which, according to the Bible, is yes. necromancy. So, and for instance, this one, Kundinyasana, this flying split. Um, both feet are elevated and you're balancing on one elbow. Mm. And it is venerating sage Kundinyasana. So he was one of the first five monks. And um, he was a Siddhartha. He was a, a disciple of Siddhartha Gautama, who is Buddha. And a lot of people don't know that Buddha was an actual person who lived and died and was buried. Yeah. He didn't become an ascended or a divinity until 500 years after Christianity. Wow, interesting. Yeah, they changed the doctrine because they saw that people, you know, the Bible did reach Asia. And so they saw people being swayed by the word and they're like, whoa, whoa, whoa. We need to counterfeit. We need to counterfeit. Yeah. Whoa. So headstand. This is like the goal in yoga. Like everybody's like, whoa, I really want to do a head, you know, a handstand mm. or a headstand. And while we're thinking about it transactionally, like in terms of I'm going to be able to get more likes or I'm going to be that cool person in class, what mm. you don't realize is that you've just turned the gospel, gospel upside down, like what you Whoa. were talking about, oh, the yeah. moon and the sun. So much of what you're saying is like like making my mind go yeah. over. You know, the Bible tells you to stand up. Who can stand in this day? Like, mm -hmm. like to stand mm -hmm. in that space with God is very difficult. And what they're doing is just... Yeah. And down. you're working so hard at these these feats, right? And you're practicing and you're swallowing and ingesting this this foolishness, mm. sorry, that's just demonic in nature, yeah. just to be able to do these things, not realizing you're communicating with spirits. Mm. This is this is not good. Yeah. So tying it back in, you know, the sun and moon, wow. transcendental meditation. So what we just saw with the headstand or the um, arm or hand um, stands is that 
This is a posture where you will become still and be aware of the breath. Um, this is where Yantra of Apastawa, the water element, you visualize the bright, pure, refreshing taste, feel your own connection. Like there's just a lot of language that's basically telling you, think of the moon and the, you know, we know that the moon does have an effect on tides and the, in the ocean. And so they're basically telling you and visualize that and realize that there's energy and power in this, right? And bring it into the center of your awareness. Flip the world upside down. Make the moon prominent and bring the wow. sun down, you know, wow. which is cockamamie. I mean, why would you do that? But yeah, he, here right. you see again, the this is in sun Egypt, Egypt, sun yeah, worship. Yeah, yeah. And you also see the cow, right? The bovine. You see um, Ishtar or Ashtoreth, Inanna. You also see this symbol in Roman coins. You also see it on the cap of the Catholic priests. Mm -hmm. They wear it as well. Mm -hmm. um, and you also see it in um, the Lima, you yeah, know, the that's more that's Western Alistair occult, Crowley's. Aleister Crowley. Yeah. Mm. You got the, the Ouroboros. Yep. And, the and you can see the swastika, yeah, swastika too. Swastika. And, yeah, and the Hindu and the symbol. Hindu symbol at the yeah, top. Hitler, which is Brahmin, yeah. Hitler was super into this kind of stuff. He was. This is where he got it from. This is exactly where, yeah. You yeah. know, I think why God told us in the second commandment not to have graven images, right? And and it's because he could see through time that this exactly. is going to get used. And yeah. and you know whether God said it and don't do this, and the devil knows that it's wrong, and mm -hmm. so now he's using it. But this is his form of communication. This is his exactly. way of stamping, going, "This is mine." Yeah, and the thing to also understand is that Sanskrit um, is a spiritual language. It was it was invented specifically for this purpose. And again, they keep telling you about how secret it is. Right? Mm, it's right, a secret. It's yeah. a secret. Um, so yoga is religion and a homage to the Hindu deities. Yoga is a moving liturgy or moving meditation that pays reverence to over 330 million yeah. deities. That's crazy. Okay. And that's just the conservative, uh, figure that they give out that everyone agrees on. And, um, you know, when you think about what you're doing, you really have to pay attention in yoga. It's not just about the physical posture. Again, it's about the breath. It's about the finger poses. It's about the way that you set your intention or your mind. And even there's, there's an internal focus that they want you to be aware of to still your mind and quiet it. And then there's an exterior point of focus. Mm -hmm. So there's, there's this in just complete blackout that you have to be in the state of like mummification. Mm -hmm. wow. mm -hmm. You know, and the, and the promise is you'll get God consciousness. Mm -hmm. And so these are some of the deities within the Hindu pantheon. Again, I cannot put 330 million of right. them on here. Yeah. But what I can't understand for the life of me is why anyone would worship someone who is as murderous, say, as, as mm. Ka, you know, Kali is here. Um, the, they just look evil, right? You know, stepping on somebody and killing them, and like right. smiling and laughing with horns. I mean, it's like if you just kind of observe and these animals, look happy like or not? they they believe that you know animal animals, excuse me, are sacred. And it's like I have a puppy and I love her dearly, but I would right. never bow to her. I would never create a temple right. for her. I can see that she's a lower being. That's there a worship would, of the creation. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So there's a focus on worshiping the created and instead of the creator. Mm -hmm. Would you pay attention to that hat too? Yeah. And which, have you ever seen which one? Uh, down here? This one? You, yeah, have you ever seen a Pope wear a hat yeah. similar yeah. to that? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. This is Dagon, yeah. mm -hmm. fish head. And you just notice that they're just disfigured, you know, mm -hmm. completely disfigured mm -hmm. people, um, half, either half male, half female, you know, hermaphrodite or transgender, um, they'll be half animal, yeah. they'll have extra arms. It's just wild. They're all kind of always holding something too as like a distraction tool. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's like, They're, here, pay attention to this and this and this well, and this and this. Even here, you see the, you know, the, the star, yeah. the hexagram. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So there's, it's all messages telling you, look, this, this is, this is dark stuff. This mm -hmm. is not, you know, mm -hmm. Bambi. Where do you see Bambi? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. There's that reindeer again. That's, that's the moon goddess that we <laughs> were just talking reindeer. about, Chandra. Um, so what is Hinduism? 
<clears throat> yoga is Hinduism. Yoga is an arm of Hinduism. It is religion. So when we talk about Hinduism, we have to understand that it's a religion with over 330 million gods. It's also the world's third largest religion. Wow. And when you put that in numbers, that's 1.2 billion followers. Wow. That's a lot of people. Um, Hinduism is a manifold system of thought marked by a range of philosophies. Notice that the Bible tells us that we are to be beware of philosophy, yeah, philosophy. right? Wow. Yep. That we shouldn't be just listening to conjectures and, and right. hanging our faith on that. Yeah. Right. Um, it has rituals, cosmological systems, astrology, divination, pilgrimage sites, uh, theology, metaphysics, mythology, Vedic rites, yoga, mudra, agamic, which is tantra rituals, that's the sexual realm yeah. of yoga, uh, transcendental meditation, possession, animal and human sacrifice, wow. and idol worship. I'm not saying everybody that does that is a Hindu does human sacrifice, but there are sects that do believe in that. And some yeah. sects will eat uh, sex S E C T S, not S E X. Okay. Sections. Yes, yeah, sections. Of W um, do do will will sacrifice somebody to get what they need. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, so one thing that I really appreciate about Pandit uh, uh, pseudo Pandit is that he's he has a great program on is it amazing discoveries mm -hmm. and he talks about why even though he's from India why he chose Christianity and how he you know was an, an inquiring mind mm -hmm. and he held this up as one of the ways to to see if you if this is something you should hang your faith on and so he says it's not him he's quoting someone else he says one must listen to the claims of the document under analysis and not just assume fraud or error unless the author disqualifies huh. himself by contradiction or known factual inaccuracies. Yeah. Mm. This religion is riddled mm. with known factual inaccuracies and contradictions. Mm -hmm. So here we see that the doctrine includes henotheism, which is one God out of many. So you can pick the God that you want, mm -hmm. right? Polytheism, you can worship all the gods yeah. you know that are available pantheism which is god is in all things so oh, yeah. everything is sacred everything is right mm -hmm. um that apple that you're about to eat mm -hmm. um that cow that's in your farm mm -hmm. uh, you know everything that's so strange because i would would i be eating god yes because then you it's are contradiction <laughs> yes <laughs> contradiction. Like it doesn't make any sense. um and then there's pantheism which is um god is the universe so that's that whole cosmic and universe language that you hear it also includes agnosticism so people who claim they don't have faith but they can still be a part of this faith system yeah. um it includes atheism so yoga is atheistic in nature right they mm -hmm. don't really believe they don't really believe in God. They believe they are God. So it's kind of, it's different. Right. Um, there's monotheism, worship of one deity, right? And I don't see how one doctrine can have all of these different mm. things unless you're trying to catch, you're casting a broad yeah. net and you're trying yeah. to catch everybody. Yep. So in other words, it's basically relativism, yep. you know? Universalism too. Whatever's God to you is God to you. Yeah. Who am I to say? Mm -hmm. right. And the God in me salutes the God in you. Right. That's what they say. But namaste. namaste. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So it's contradictory, full of known factual inaccuracies. Um, so who is the supreme being in Hinduism? And you've heard me refer to him already, Brahman. And mm -hmm. they call him the ultimate reality. They say that he's the cosmos, the universe. But he also comes with other deities. But the top three deities are the ones that you hear about the most because it's a way to con convert Christians. Mm -hmm. And so they talk about, um, let's see, uh, there's the three. The top three are Brahma, the sustainer, Vishnu. Um, or sorry, creator Brahman, the sustainer Vishnu, and the destroyer Shiva. So it, that's just like a counterfeit trinity, right? Exactly. Yeah. Wow. But they don't believe in a trinity. That's just the three that you hear. That's, that is the most, there's like five at the very top from what I've studied. And, um, but yet each one of them is an incarnation of itself, mm -hmm. if that mm -hmm. makes sense. So it's really mm -hmm. Satan. Mm -hmm. And then Satan's like, Mm -hmm. But then his little minions that want to be just like him. Or but whatever, no, yeah. he's just like, you know, 
But there's also this side of me. Oh, interesting. And I'm going to call him Vishnu. And then there's this side of me, and I'm going to mm. call him, her Shakti. And it's this, and it's this. And so mm. it's kind of like, I'm going to cover all my bases because as many people as there are on Earth, one of these have got to hit. Yeah, right. Mm. right. Exactly. Yeah, maybe that's why he identifies as androgenic, you know? It's yeah. It's like, yeah. you know, whatever. Well, it's perverting it. what God said, right? right? Marriage is between a man and a yeah. woman. So he's attacking that. So we come to what is Hatha Yoga, and basically it uses the physical body, the Anamaya Kosha, to influence the, and, and gain control over the mind. That's the whole intent. It has nothing to do with you being physically fit. Um, yeah. And these are the different limbs that they use. Um, and again, you ask, can you separate it? Clearly, no. Mm -hmm. You know, the Yoga Pradipika, Pradip Pika, excuse me, tells us that the goal of all yoga practice is to awaken Kundalini Shakti. So when wow. you're doing yoga, it's it's a it's very narrow minded. The goal is to experience this yeah. this awakening. So and then the awakening is what? Because I, I know I think I heard from uh, Eric um, Wilson, whom we did a documentary with the Dragon Review, and he was a former. Um, uh, karate and multiple mm -hmm. martial arts instructors he said that that meant possession yeah right yeah, yeah. it he is possessed. so what they call samadhi or they call mosca it's like you're being liberated from your mind and you're being united with the ultimate mm -hmm. reality wow. which is brahman so in other words you're being possessed mm -hmm. yeah um, and then here we are new york times bestseller sadguru says kundalini is mind altering and you know he says that it's it's it it's able to change the perceptions and change the chemicals in your your brain as your eye is awakened. Which is interesting because uh, in Revelation it talks about the dragon will deceive the whole world through sorcery or yep. pharmakia, and that's what pharmakia is is mind altering. Yep. And we see how fast yoga is growing. Yep. And how you know it's really taking over the world and it's deceiving a lot of people. Even Christians are getting involved. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So there is a link for anyone who's interested to see what kundalini looks like. I'm mm. not going to click on it here, um, but it's very like it looks like demonic possession, like yeah. what you would think, like wow. the exorcist. And you see it in a lot of churches, charismatic churches. Yep. You'll see the same thing. The same what thing. What was the name of that, that documentary that, that, that um, put, put the kundalini next to the um, people in the oh, church? Yeah, the we, Holy we actually. Oh, uh, oh, I see. Yeah. When yeah you we see have a it, video um, on it. Like Pentecostal. Oh, churches. there was a name yeah. for it. It wasn't like Kundalini Waking. It was like uh, Yoga Uncoiled or something like that. Yeah. Or, oh, I don't know, but we have a video on it. Look up uh, yeah. the Law yeah. of Attraction or uh, Tongues in the Church. Well, we'll put we'll a click right yeah. here. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but in this particular video, you see the guy who is basically um, he he's a he's a sorcerer and he's you know manipulating this woman with his fingers and he's controlling the serpent and she's undulating her oh. eyes are rolled back wow. so you'll see that version you'll also see the version where it's um erotic you'll see mm. them looking like they're performing an act of, of you know and that's sex. yoga mm -hmm. wow mm. yeah um and so why does he say it's dangerous? Oh, yeah. He says kundalini yoga in its essence is the most dangerous form of yoga. When things go wrong, they go seriously wrong in ways that you can't fix it. And this right. is someone who the door teaches and... it, practices it, promotes it, right? This yep. is not, no, this is he's, not like a Christian. This guy is one of the yeah. like biggest gurus right now um, out there. I think that there are certain demonic entities that get invoked and they are literally crazy. Mm -hmm. Like I remember um, mm -hmm. Roger Monod talking about there are certain classes of, of, of demons yep. that when they were told they could not return back to heaven, they went crazy. Yeah. Yeah. And they're the ones that are like, what? Yeah. Right? Yeah. If you invite invite that, what? in you there's no right. getting them out there right. I mean, it's like it because in caps being encapsulated in your body is like heaven for them yep. Mm -hmm. yep. you know yep. you have to think about that you know because yeah. it's vengeance toward god and it's also wow i get to you know do yeah. something take someone yeah. out you, you see this in the bible where where there was this man who was possessed and G it was only through jesus power he was there and said, go and leave this man. And the, the demons entered a group of swine and they fell yes. off the rocks. Yep. And so, it, yeah, I can see that being dangerous. And mm -hmm. it's only Jesus and through his strength that you can be set free that from that true. possession. 
So he also points out that there's two types of yoga. He would never give yoga, the kundalini yoga, to a person who is like raising a family. So all those moms at home yeah. that are, you know, taking time out to do yoga, you're really putting your family at risk. Yeah. Um, he says, we teach people who live in family situations a different yoga. There is a certain other type of yoga we teach to ascetics, which by the way, none of us mm. are. Like none of us are living in some desert, yeah. you know, completely abstemious of, of everything yeah. and mm. devoid of bathing and, mm. you know, that's none of us. So we don't fit in either category. Mm. Um, so here's a case study, a case report of a 19 year old it's okay but oh, yeah. she basically shows up in the hospital and she has um signs of awakening of the kundalini and it manifests th itself through her physical and psychological psych psychologically and some of the 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 things that she reports is that she's feeling this vital energy in her body you know and that there's it's coming from an outside force and she just feels like she's the recipient and so she describes it as feeling feeling vibrations of prana in different parts inside the body, feeling electric light currents flowing up and down the nerves, experiencing bliss, mm. having divine visions wow. and getting inspiration and insight. She's 19 years old. She she found yoga on her own and got intrigued because of books and stuff that she saw online. So she started doing it. Wow. And then before long, she was having an, a Kundalini experience. And so the Bible tells us, let no one disqualify you, insisting on asceticism, going on in detail about visions, mm. puffed up without reason by his sensuous mind. And wow. that's exactly what yoga is. It's wow. all about the mind. Wow. And it is about, you know, perceptual experiences that fool you and think that you're one with God or or you have become God and puffed up without reason that's what you're yeah. talking about like when you're doing this stuff these people are still depressed they still but yeah. yet they they're like I got my yoga mat I'm yeah. enlightened and all these things they have a pride that yeah. comes with it but for what without reason they no still reason. have no hope they still have no peace they're still depressed no nope. and and it's mm. important to realize that all of these gurus who are quote unquote ascended masters I'm not going to say a thousand percent is this this is true well i can say a thousand percent they all died but i can also tell you that most of them are extremely perverted especially the ones that have introduced yoga to this world hmm. they have class action suits against them for wow. child rape um, wow. molestation sexual harassment you name it um they're just uncontrolled with their need for material things um like the guy bikram Bikram had like, I don't know, 20 to 40 Rolls Royces, something like that. It's so weird. Like they get away with it because when somebody goes off to India or whatever, and this mm -hmm. guru, he's touching yeah. all over them. They're like, well, just, just trust him. You know, mm -hmm. he's like the guru. Right. He's the guy, right. you know? Well, even Sadhguru, um, he has uh, women who have come forward, but for some reason he's still out there wow. very prominent. Yeah. And so back, you know, in the 1500s and late or early 1600s, um, Descartes wrote about um, visual perception and the role of the pineal gland. And the pineal gland is some is, is it's basically in the middle of our brain and it looks like a pine cone. And that's mm. really a symbol that you see in the occult. Mm. Yeah. Um, and you also cone. see it in the Catholic Church. Right. Yeah. So there's they they really want to affect the pineal gland to have these perceptions hmm. and so Descartes wrote about it and he had basically he got he got smashed for his idea but then Helena Bla uh what's her name Blavatsky. Alcee Blavatsky mm -hmm. where is she here she is um she argued that the p pineal gland is that which the eastern occultists call devaka the, the the divine eye or the third eye mm -hmm. and to this day it's the foremost organ of spirituality in the human brain and so she's saying regardless of whether you think it's scientific or not the reality is that we are getting altered states of consciousness we are getting this you know um out of body experience and these gifts mm -hmm. because we're activating this gland mm -hmm. and actually science now currently says that the pineal gland's primary function of letting in light and darkness, right? That's the main thing that it's supposed to do. It's supposed to basically allow us also to regulate our sense of time. Hmm. Um, 
the circadian rhythms um, is also what they're now calling the third eye. Mm. They say that in, in this one study, it says the mystical psychedelic compound found in the normal brain, not only does the pineal gland regulate the secretion of melatonin, which is a sleep inducing hormone, studies have also revealed that the pineal gland has naturally occurring DMT. Yeah. And so this is what people are calling the spirit molecule, yeah. if you've heard that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, um, mm -hmm. it's, it's a way to make the brain create its own hallucinogenic formula let's say dmt remember, is natural and it's released at birth and death and when you dream but they yes. can't really prove that they, but that's and they, they can't pinpoint how the mechanism is but remember it said in the yoga the ancient uh, doctrine it said we want to change what in the body hmm. the, the the function of the mind and the chemicals in the oh, body yeah. Oh, yeah. so oh, yeah. they're on to something oh yeah because mm -hmm. there's people that you know they they tell their testimonies when i started yoga i st started doing meditation and then i could start going into altered states of consciousness yep. and then it's like yeah. then i wouldn't even they, they would take 20 minutes sometimes and they say i could get to where i could instantly be in an altered state yep. there was yeah. even a, a video of a lady who was sharing that she was abducted by aliens af right after meditating yeah vision yeah. well most of the time I, in fact i think that's what were, came out of the documentary that you made most of the time it was because of the meditation that mm -hmm. they saw the aliens yeah. Yeah. and there's 400 documented cases of people coming out of that illusion mm -hmm. yeah. by using the name of jesus yeah. That's right. So yeah. that tells me that it's not this real it's physical, real. it's this yeah. something that's going on yeah. in the brain yeah. that's probably and, you know, tied to this. Ivan Raj, whom you guys had, you know, he also showed that one of Shiva's avatars is an alien. Wow. And yeah. I don't think yeah. that's a coincidence. And that the yeah. avatars yeah. are all blue yeah. and avatar yep. and it's like throughout history you have all these blue things. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the, yep. the demons are messing with each culture. Mm -hmm. This is their way hollywood of making it familiar to us yep. so yeah. that we just accept it so how we see in 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 past um societies we can see that here the eye of horus right um in the front of it you can see a snake the yeah. cobra mm -hmm. and that is translated to the third eye because mm -hmm. the the serpent is what gives you that knowledge mm -hmm. right and so again you see shiva you know and and chandra and shakti and his little friend so this is going back to that same case study um and it's just talking about you know the girl's experiences and how she was feeling and she she's saying that she's hearing voices and that they're telling her to follow orders in her day-to-day -day activities and so she no longer is in control of her body she's now um just completely you know mummified or zombified and something else is orchestrating her life for her she no wow. longer eats she no longer sleeps she's just up doing yoga and pranayama breathing what wow yeah so over months she also expressed to have experienced eternal enlightenment and she initially well, excuse me her family members also believe these experiences to be the outcome of her yoga practices However, the change in the patient was not seen as a deviance, but as an impact of yoga practice until she stopped eating, speaking, interacting with others, and was found frozen in sustained postures requiring medical attention. And that's when they Ooh. took her to the ER. Oh, my. So this is what people are playing with and they don't realize it. According to Rama, Kundalini is thought to contain latent energy and memories that could be personal and transpersonal. The modern way of understanding this is saying that basically you are using the unconscious mind. And in 94, one of these prominent gurus, Sivananda, he wrote, the spiritual basis for Saraswati says that some people who have awakened Kundalini get in contact with their unconscious body and see inauspicious ferocities, elements such as ghosts, monsters, etc., or get other perceptual phenomena, phenomenal experiences. So that's what you were just talking Aliens. about. Aliens. Yeah. Yeah. Aliens. Yeah. And, and a lot of people, we're seeing a lot of this, like mm -hmm. people have had the experience with aliens are seeing their dead relatives and yeah. stuff. Like they'll say, I boarded a ship an alien abducted me i went on a ship and i saw my dead grandpa and yeah. stuff like it's always mm -hmm. this connection with familiar spirits the um necromancy yep, communicating exactly. with exactly and this is that same thing just in a, it's it, it's been fixed for the culture yeah and the story that he's promoting wow. and so this girl ends up basically you know um 
impaired judgment, absent of insight. She had they they had to actually diagnose her with schizophrenia. Wow. Yeah, and Over so yoga. she was catatonic subtype. She was she was then prescribed uh, resveratrone and lorazepam. Oh. And my, by the way, she never got cured. These she's, are real, she's, she's, these, these are, are real actual things. case studies. And yeah. that case study came from India, from a medical Indian journal. So it's oh, not even man. someone who's against, you know what I mean? Yeah, it's, it's, it's of their the culture. culture. Man. Um, so let's talk about cities because this is something people don't understand. When they're doing yoga, they're getting these quote unquote gifts and they're called cities. The paranormal powers. The success of Hatha Yoga depends on attaining the 18 cities. And the cities are associated with psychic or paranormal paranormal abilities. There are great, mm. there are eight great ones, right? And they say basically you can get anything out of thin air. It's called manifesting. Yeah, uh, law we of hear attraction, that? Oprah, all those people. Exactly. You can achieve clairvoyance, telepathy, clairaudience, where oh. you hear things that aren't you know there. Um, psychokinesis, where you can move things with your mind. Mm. So you know, where's my phone? And I just move it over mm. here. Um, you can also levitate, you can shrink your body to an atomic size, wow. teleportation, ability to live underwater. So that brings mm. me back to like these, these people. That sounds who like do, Marvel no. or <laughs> DC. But, but think about that guy who does all those crazy magic tricks and stunts oh, yeah, yeah, and yeah, he's yeah. underwater. Oh yeah. Uh, David Blaine. Yeah. And, and, um, yeah. Some of those people. Yeah. I mean, underwater for an, un like there's how, how can somebody yeah. humanly do that? No. Chris for Angel. How long? Oh, it's like hours, yeah. if not days. Yeah. You can't hold your breath no, for you hours. Cannot. Your body would, you'd be devoid so of oxygen. It just makes me wonder like how Satan does that, mm -hmm. you know? Like, I think it's all the illusion yeah. of power and like, mm -hmm. you know, like God, when he sends somebody into vision, right? They're like not breathing. And I mean, there's, there's supernatural phenomenon that are happening yeah. there. Legion and, could break chains. Yeah. I mean, and Satan's like, oh, guy. wow, that was pretty powerful. And a lot of mm -hmm. people are going to believe it if that, 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 supernatural thing happened yep. and during this thing so he's making these supernatural feel concrete fictitious mm -hmm. things happening mm -hmm. i mean they, they really they, they i mean if you can yeah do those yeah. some of those things i mean that's not that's not natural you gotta you gotta attribute that whatever he's telling right. you is is true to something yeah well, and he will tell you where you got exactly. it from. look we can get some of this from the bible so um you know the ability to break chains and stuff teleportation Mm -hmm. Satan did that to Jesus. He mm -hmm. took him up to a mountain. That's yeah. true. Took him up to a high temple and all that. But he what, can do but that. But God stuff. also used that power for the the um, Philip. Yes, when he no. sent him to baptize the mm -hmm. the eunuch Candace's. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. So we know that there is a supernatural world, but these are these are quote unquote gifts, which are actually curses that you're getting, and they also say that you know again, and this this is the girl attest to this the case study it attested it says that you can free yourself from hunger thirst wow. other bodily disturbances hearing and seeing things far away moving the body at the speed of the mind assuming any form one desires entering and controlling people and and animals that's what makes me think of those brief shape shifters you you name it yeah. mm -hmm. like this is what modern movies are made yep. out of yeah. yep. and yeah. we're just getting massaged yes yeah to, it's preparation so this just goes over Raja, you know, yoga, it's basically Ashtanga, it's employing the eight limbs of Patanjali, but all the things that I touched over the beginning, you know, um, and the thing that happens is that yoga is very addictive and people start to think, oh, that's the power that I have. Mm. But we have to be very clear. That's not your power. You know, yeah. these are powers that are coming from the divine universe mm. and it's his power. It's Satan's power. And so when you yoke with him, he allows you to share in it, yeah. but he can Comes turn at a on high you. Cost. Yeah. Yeah. He can easily cause you a problem and they go, oh, you want some healing? Well, um, you know, he'll tell his buddies, hey, stop Put bugging some crystals yeah. on there. Yeah. Yeah. And so you think whatever you're doing here is actually yeah. healing you, but it's just but it's them not. removing and giving you the problem. Exactly. Yeah. And this is just an example. You know, the very first asana they tell you, siddhasana, you know, when you're sitting cross-legged, you know, with your hands in Anjali Mudra, they say it opens the doors of realization. It's um, then the, the the second one says the description of savasana, that's corpse pose when you're lying like a dead person, touches the fringe of the psychological plane to be traversed in the attempt to reach the metaphysical goal. And then bhujangasana, which is the cobra pose. Um, I didn't have a picture of myself doing that. He's raising it. It's where you're your laying on the yeah on the on your stomach and you're arching your your upper th your thoracic zone. 
um, is, is basically an awakening of the Kundalini. So from physiological, there, there is here a rise to the spiritual field. This is all witchcraft. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. There's no other way to look at it. And it's such a counterfeit. Like when you come to God, right? What's the first thing you want to do? When God showed up to anybody in the Bible, any example that we have, what did people do? They fell down and they'd like, yep. you they know, worship. fell on their knees, right? So sitting on the ground is mm -hmm. like the first submission yep. part mm -hmm. of it. Then I'm going to die. And then I'm going to come back yeah. as your thing. And the thing, this is what you asked about chakras. Mm -hmm. And so you can see that each one of these has an emblem on it, you know, and each one represents a different zone or organ in the bottom body. But these aren't the only, these are the seven ch main chakras that are involved in, in, in Kundalini awakening, but there's others. Um, what, what's up with the lotus flower? The, the lotus, top? they say that when you've reached Samadhi, when you've like opened up your mm -hmm. brain and you've connected um, that it's like a, a, a thousand petal lotus and the lotus huh. has a has a great symbology in both Buddhism and Hinduism because it grows in dirt like mud oh, and it wow. comes up this beautiful flower hmm. and so they really play on that like but but then like you've achieved <laughs> darkness not light mm -hmm. like the moon not but, the sun. but exactly wow. darkness is light in this world wow and remember Everything the scripture says in. that yeah whoever right? calls call darkness light oh. light and darkness yeah. bitter sweet yeah exactly. or sweet bitter Isaiah. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> so again mudras what are they it's sign language for the spirits so you know they're they're nonverbal modes of communication with deities yeah. you're playing with you know yeah. inviting the weirdest of things these are all my hands and i can't believe that i was able to do that first one how right. many pieces of art have you ever saw oh, in any sort of art Art, art from 16th century yeah, stuff. Jesus, Buddha, everybody Jesus did that. The has Baphomet. always has this one and that one. Yep. How many celebrities have you seen this? Yep. Yep. All the rappers and yep. everybody else is doing it. I mean, dude, he's like literally the same. They're telling the spirit world. They're thinking the spirit. Yeah, exactly. Yep. That's showing you and stamping who their God truly yep. is and yep. who they're connected to. So are mudras just postures you know are they are or are they or are they just gestures or are they actually postures and an invocation they are each finger represents a different element mm. and you'll see that they're into the elements right there's that whole nature worship well the same thing happens in the occult right with the pentagrams and the hexagrams mm. and each you know uh, angle points to a different element so mm -hmm. when you start to make different combinations with your fingers you're invoking those energies which are actually spirits mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so the one that you asked about um prana mudra that you always see jesus in gnostic art mm -hmm. yeah. you know in catholic works you'll mm -hmm. see him using that and the reason is because prana mudra it's said to be the one of the most important mudras because wow. it, it's it's going to give you life and vitality and and awaken things within you mm -hmm. and then the middle one the one that looks like the okay fi big uh finger mm, triple six. is right the, or the triple six is gaian mudra and that's the elements when you're touching your fingers like that you're touching space and air Mm. And again, many people are seen doing this, even in um, Hindu dance, you yeah. see a lot of this and it supposedly awakens the crown chakra, which is the snake. Exactly. Mm. So six, 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 six snake. Wow. You see it. Yes. It's all look at, interrelated. Look at, they're all, all interrelated. Right. Okay. So we did a project on the elements yeah. and, and really witchcraft is a counterfeit for God's miracles, right? Mm -hmm. Something supernatural happens. You got two options. You could yeah. either say something did that mm -hmm. God did it. Or in the yeah. witchcraft, it's like, if I just mix these right elements together, if I say the right words together, if I do the right things, mm -hmm. I'm now in control yeah. of that supernatural yep. thing mm -hmm. so it's taking the power away from god and going now i'm the I one that it. did that mm -hmm. and it's weird to see all of this in history and then bam it's in all these cartoons yeah. all these movies yeah. and then we did a whole project that broke down all these witchcraft mm -hmm. cartoons that do this kind of stuff and the thing is that you notice that you know if you look at the Egyptians, they were said to be, you know, one of the most technologically advanced, most, yeah. you know, genius societies. They believed in these same deities yeah. and yeah. they were destroyed. Mm -hmm. So how is it that that mm -hmm. God is right? Wow. I just, I Good just point. think of it that way, Good you know, point. and Good you point. just see that same message just being transferred and repackaged over and over and over and over again. And this is exactly what that it's is. It's like they've tried it with cultures throughout history, right? And they watch the culture go down. They perfect it. They tweak it. They try it yeah. again. And it's like, you're seeing these same threads yeah. of things. That's why Babylon, Egypt, yep. Greece, Rome, all those 
have these exact same similarities. They do. But I like that you brought up the fact that mm. none of those are around because mm. none of those kingdoms, like Daniel's two statue, mm. yeah. are going to last. Nope. It's going to be yeah. God's nope. They're going to be rock. taken down. So... What's the? Let's put it all together. This is like an. Then this is coming straight from the, the the Vedic text. Okay, so it's coming from them. I'm. This isn't someone else's words. This is their scripture, and it says, "Sitting in Sadasana, so that's that pose, you know, um, with your knees crossed. Close the two ears with the two thumbs, the eyes with the index finger. So this is another mudra, you know, mm. that you're about to start doing. Um, the nostrils with the middle fingers, the upper lip with the four fingers, and the lower lip with the little fingers. Draw in the prana vayu by kaki mudras and join it with the apana vayu. Contemplating the six chakras in their order, let the wise one awaken, the sleeping serpent goddess mm. Kundalini, by repeating the mantra hun and hansa and raising the sakti force Kundalini with the Jiva, place them at the thousand petaled lotus, the crown, being himself full of sakti, so being himself fully possessed, wow. being joined with the great Shiva, right? Which is the destroyer. Which is the destroyer, the god of lord in, or the lord of dance and yoga. Let him think of the various pleasures and enjoyments. Hmm. So remember, your sumptuous mind. Yeah. Let him contemplate on the union of Shiva, spirit, and Shakti, force or energy in this world. Being himself all bliss, let him realize yeah. that he is the Brahma. Mm -hmm. You are God. Yeah. So there's something really interesting with the whole sexuality, right? Nowhere in the Bible does God ever tell you to have a sexual experience outside of marriage, right? No. So think about this. God designs this wonderful, beautiful thing that we all share that you are giving pleasure yeah. to someone else, yeah. right? Yeah. It's this ultimate act of others' focusedness, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. What the devil's done is just tweaked with that. He's mm -hmm. just twisted to that no you can do it by yourself you yeah. can have the pleasure that 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 you want and look at that you're having this pleasurable experience outside yeah. of of someone else mm -hmm. or whatever mm -hmm. and you're like literally doing it in a it's, demonic it's way pornography with pornography in your mind yeah, but with yeah. a demon doing mm -hmm. it yep wow, that's yeah. dude crazy. this it's is just really, crazy and, and, and this the is the thing goddess. these are the things they do not show you no. when no. you're getting certified this is stuff that i had to research because God was like, I need you to understand what you're doing is not right. Yeah. It will lead to damnation. Wow. So I'm going to speed up really quickly. It just talks about what is the, the concept of sin in the Hindu culture, in the religion. And it basically, they only say there's seven of them. And it, they say that, you know, we fight against them, but the more that you fight against them, the more you're going to have this, this Dharma and this karma. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so, <clears throat> the first one is lust, which I find interesting because the whole wow. Kundalini thing is lust. Yeah. So what are we, it's again, contradictory. contradictory mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. um, then they say <clears throat> it's anger. You know, you should never be angry. Well, look at some but of the all their gods are gods, angry. Yes. Right, right. <laughs> Um, they say greed. You mm. shouldn't be greedy. Law They're of all greedy. Manifest, right? manifest law, but you're on it. Wow. Yeah. Um, and then they say attachment. We That's shouldn't right. be attached to anything. But isn't doing yeah. this whole practice yoking. a form of That's what attachment? It's yeah, Yoga. Being you're yoking. one with everything. Right. And then it says, um, sense of I, so the ego, right? They always want to kill the ego. We were made mm. in the image of God, therefore he wants us to die. So what yeah. if this is literally everything that you're going to get if you play around with that? It really is. You're going to get lust. You're going to get anger. You're going to get greed. You're going to be attached, attached to, to things. Yeah. You're going to have a sense because of only you. Because yoga is addictive. Yeah. And it's pride, yeah. like, oh, I got yeah. my yoga mat and all yeah. that. You're, exactly. You're yeah. prideful. And so they talk about how do you get rid of sin? How do you repent? Well, they say you can recite the Purusha Satkum 40 times. The Bible mm. talks about repetitious yeah, prayer, right? right? Exactly. Vain. Vain repetitious prayer. It says, or you can observe Manavrata. It's a, it's a vow of silence. So they'll just not talk. You can observe um, Dana, which is charity, or Dana, excuse me. And also you can do it through aradna which is a ceremony of adoration mm -hmm. or you can do it in by bathing in sacred uh, rivers like the ganges well, and so the easiest one <laughs> you know but god is telling us don't worship you know you know paul tells us anything that you do 
in terms of idol worship, you're basically giving it to demons. It's yeah. not of God. Mm. And so he urges us to make sure that we present our bodies as a living, holy sacrifice. The same mm -hmm. way that this yoga practice is to present ourselves to their, these other deities, God is saying, you owe me that too. Mm -hmm. And you don't have to do all this bizarre stuff. You could just read the word and walk in my right. path. Instead of being silent, just ask for your yeah. sins to be forgiven. And yeah. Yeah. whatever you ask is will be forgiven. Look at the counterfeit that's yeah. happening right and the bible says there's one mediator between god and man which is jesus christ, jesus christ. Pray, you not, pray to jesus boom right. yeah not any of these other deities and so these are just examples and it turns into ancestor worship because that's one of the ways that you can get rid of sin um and so these are all the different rituals that they'll do you know a homa a fire ritual um paksha um, and, and basically what they're doing is they're, they're having this, this seance and they are nourish. They're asking their past ancestors to nourish them wow. and to bless them and protect them. Wow. And so there's all these rites and things that they're doing to venerate the dead. And remember, like I said, this stuff doesn't work unless there's an angle of ancestor worship wow. and you know, wow. then it, it becomes real to them because you've got skin in the game and then on the topic of of um the 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 concept of sin there is in in southern india the yalama, yalama yalama excuse me cult and it's basically a cult of divine prostitution Whoa. so in hinduism there you can every path is a path to enlightenment like if you want to be a prostitute go ahead and be that i got a god for that but they literally say don't have lust you right know, everything's but, contradictory but in and but that's the lie is is they're telling you yeah it's, that they're you, that's what the they're getting away is, from yeah. but it's yeah. Yeah. it's literally leading you into and this is just the different there's three different types of these girls and mm. if you want you can go to youtube <laughs> this one's family safe you can actually watch this and you can see that i think it was bbc news did a, a doc like a quick little 10 you know story about it and what's interesting is this is what they did uh with bill worship in in yeah, uh, the temple you know, yeah like yeah. Same. Ch children were offered up as sacrifices and the children were sent to be child prostitutes in the yeah. temple yeah mm -hmm. same same story just different time different place and so that's just the um the link to be able to go there and so this just goes into exactly what they're doing and the priests are actually involved in this so the women the young girls um are basically auctioned off to different under age yes wow all ages under age they're auctioned off to basically pimps and these pimps support them and some of them remain virgins until a specific time but there's a dowry that's involved like it's a very corrupt system and mm. um they also have to prostitute for the temple like what you were just saying mm. um well there's you, you leave it to man they're going to somehow turn it sexual exactly right? this is literally where yeah. it's and even leaves. the men dress up yeah. as women <laughs> Um, again, if you want to check that out to just fact check me, no. please do, because I'm not here to desecrate anybody. I'm just here to expose you to what this religion really stands wow. for. So we're tracing the lie all the way back. And, and it, it really boils down to the biblical uh, accounts that we've already spoken about, you know, um, you know, wow. Satan getting cast out, him saying, you know, I'm going to be like the most high. Mm. Um, these are all across the world now these are this isn't every single one this is as many as i could find or put on a page but these are all the different mythologies and religions that are present or past that involve possession wow. and it's institutionalized as religion so this whole concept that you'll be reincarnated that there's angel worship that there's you know um, dead ancestors that we need to venerate like and you, you even <laughs> see it in the kabbalah with you know jewish mythology and yeah. again we we you yeah. know that christianity there are branches that believe in that. i was about to point it out like you put their sola sub scriptura yeah. so like those christians who stuck with the scriptures don't have that no, but no. other who stray away from the scriptures do yes what i think is crazy is sitting in this seat of earth's history mm -hmm. we have the history to look exactly. at and then we're looking at the bible and we're going now that makes sense wait yeah. now that makes sense yeah like, everything's there yeah we just it's open to whomever would 
dare pick it up and read it. Wow. It's not, there's, he doesn't hide anything. Oh. Where this stuff, it's yeah. hidden. It's all secret. Yeah. Nobody gets deceived if you're solo scriptura. Exactly. That's right. yeah. So you already talked about this, you know, in Mark, yeah. you know, Mark 5. Um, it talks about, you know, <laughs> possession. Um, the Bible, again, talks about the state of the dead. The dead know nothing. Yep. Right. They're resting until Jesus comes. So don't be deceived. And mysticism is a big part of this. You know, there's a lot of uh, ritual rites. And notice that the Greek uh, word mueo is properly shutting the eyes and the mouth to experience mystery. Wow. wow. Shutting the wow. eyes. Do you remember the description mm -hmm. that I just gave yeah. you? Mm -hmm. you he, he had the person contain every, shut every orifice yeah. and every perceptory. Every in order yeah. to get this divine Ears, eyes nose yeah mouth. and mouth wow yeah mm. and at the same time they're doing this other thing and i think it's called vayu mudra where you're squeezing your anus mm. wow. yeah what? so you're shutting off all you know these Every areas orifice. of yes wow. in order to get and again how is it that you're getting a revelation when you're shutting your eyes and mm. mouth mm. Right. Yeah, it doesn't make uh, sense, but that's what it is. Yeah. Faith, yeah. faith comes by hearing and yeah. hearing by, by the, the word, word of God. God. So yeah. we need to hear, we need yeah. to read, we yeah. need to see. It starts to make sense. And so these are just some of the ways, some of the terms that you have for this mysticism, moksha, nirvana, ascension, atun Yahweh, Buddhahood, Gnosis, and then the different ways, you know, because it's all about perception. It's about mm -hmm. disturbing the chemicals in the body. So all these are some of the mind. psychedelic drugs, wow. the meditation practices. Um, there's also a lot of nature worship. And, you know, God talks about the fact that I am not nature. I created it, you right. know, mm -hmm. but right. I am I am the Lord. I do not change. I do not lie. Where these yeah. deceiving spirits are full of lies mm -hmm. constantly. Right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So we know that we have to, you know, keep our eye on, on the Bible and Jesus. Amen. And so this just goes into Lucifer's son of the morning. And these are... Um, accounts and statements from actual occult members and it says there's no contradiction here for set is the egyptian devil and shiva is the indian god of destruction both names set and shiva are also listed in the satanic bible as none other than satan wow shiva is and then helena blavatsky affirms now we have but to remember that shiva and his palestinian baal or moloch and saturn are identical yeah. so it's just wow. the same god over and over right. and over Repackaged. again shiva same same the the Oris in egypt the serpent that then becomes you know, um, something that we see in Dion Dionysus, which was a Greek god. And again, the sex part is there, you know, sex oh, orgies, drunken, Diana. right. And, and it says drunken sex to bring about demons to actual human sacrifice. Oh, wow. Yeah. And so the, mon the mother of Alexander, or Alexander the Great, Olympias, she was a member of this cult. And it was said that she would sleep with snakes oh, in her bed. Wow. wow. Yeah, and have sex and all that. Wait, with snakes? Yeah. Wow. Hey, and so there's a glycon. this is the serpent. Exactly. Yeah. Glycon. Right. You see all the, you know, it doesn't matter what pagan, you know, uh, religion it is. You see the same gods repeated yeah. over and over just with a different mask. And it's yeah. like glycon with a lamb's head. Mm. Yeah. It almost looks like. Yeah. Side swept. Side yeah, swept hair. Or whatever. Yeah. It's like. <laughs> um, the Oris again is just another version of that, you know, um, Horus, the eye of Horus. Um, this gives you knowledge. The serpent gives you knowledge. It opens your third eye. He's the one that said, eat this fruit, your eyes will be open. Exactly. So here there's that focus again, just it just differentiates between when you see the left eye and when you see the right eye. One mm. is the sun, one is the moon. You see it again here in Shiva the destroyer, mm. you know, these are just antonyms for the same God. You can also see that same symbol in Islam. You can see it yeah. in the Hamsa. You can see it in the Eye of Providence within the Catholic faith. Oh, wow. You can see it again here, you know, and, and as you mentioned, the dollar. Yeah. You know, it's a symbol of an occult presence. And you can see it again back in the biblical days. These are the rep representations of those gods. You see the, the sunburst star and you see the, the, the uh, crescent moon. Mm -hmm. um, 
these are just all the forms. I mean, I could go on and on. You can even yeah. see it here. You see that a pattern. That Egyptian god. You see the the horns mm -hmm. with the the solar the disc. disc. Yeah. You see it as the third eye of Shiva. Mm -hmm. I mean, it in just, between the bull horns yeah, and yeah, it just doesn't stop. You see it in Shriner's logo. You even see it in you know the the, the emblem of Islam. Wow. You see it on top of their temples. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, and and you know I'll go just wind it up here because I could literally keep going over and over. And you just see these gods. They just morph from one culture to the next, to the next, to the next. And each each one dies, and oh, then you see the time. eye and the the triangle, the hexagram, wow. and Aleister Crowley. He With has the it on sun. The yeah. sun. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah, wow. And again, the transgender nature of the gods. Right. You know, right. you see it in Bothlemeth. You see it in Sri Devi. You see it here, Shiva. You know, it's it's all over the place. Right. And it just doesn't stop. Wow. The occult and serpents and the moon and the crescent moon and the and the and the sun solar disk it just never ends. This is it's a is... common thread through everybody. Wow. If you look at the Hindu version of of Shiva, and you go to the Greco-Roman version of Isis, doesn't she look just like Shiva? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. If you go to Isis from Egypt, is she not? The yeah, same the as same these. Wow. And if you go to the bull, the holy of bull. Of Baal? Wow. Yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. I and mean, then it's even been morphed into Christianity where you have. Um, Jesus with a disc? Yeah. 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 Halos yeah. And, and that's stuff a, that Christ head. consciousness. Yeah. Again, these are all the, the places Satan has fed this lie to. Wow. So I just really hope that people would learn that, you know, idolatry, yoga, it's it's a dangerous practice. It's not limited. It's an entering wedge. It's yeah. I mean, we can go on for hours. I'm just going to sum it up here and just hopefully mm -hmm. you know that again, I love every single nation, culture, yeah. people. It has nothing to do with that. That's yeah, right. I think we need to make a statement because um, we've been having some messages from very sincere Catholics mm -hmm. about some, some, you know, sometimes we talk about you know the idea of Catholicism and connect it with, um, you know, when we show up these these show these pagan symbolisms, yeah. and 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 that is because like we had said before, there you can look it up in history that mm -hmm. that paganism and at the time Christianity was merged mm -hmm. that out of it came Catholicism. Yeah. But we don't hate on Catholics. Like right. I said, I I, right. I went to a Catholic church. Yeah. I went through the childhood commune. I had the rosary, didn't know what to do with it, but I was in yeah. that church for a little while. My grandparents were part of it. My mom came with me and took us there. And so we, we don't hate on Catholics. We don't hate on any, you know, we mentioned something about Pentecostals in here. We don't mm -hmm. hate on them. No. Like you said, we don't, we, all we are wanting to do is reveal the truth so people can come to sola scriptura jesus yes and the scriptures alone and worship him in truth that's amen. just amen. what i want to point amen. out that we we love yeah it's all not people the from people. all religions amen. it's the doctrine that's yes. going to lead us to a misunderstanding yes and it's going to rob us from our right the inherit inheritance of the kingdom exactly and we should be watchmen we should be looking out for right. each other yeah and we should not just look to the form of godliness and think that that is our salvation it's not and so even for me if if i found something in my faith that mm -hmm. was not right i would bring it to light because right. i would hope for correction mm -hmm. the goal is to testify of christ mm -hmm. not of a aberration or you know a, denomination yeah a denomination or a yeah mm -hmm. you know here's your version of it that's exactly. not it it's mm -hmm. it's the bible in the bible alone yeah so amen. i hope you at home amen. if you are listening to this and maybe feel offended please don't we really mean this in a loving right. way uh, and a caring way to yeah. just reveal to people the truth which is jesus the way the truth and the life amen, amen. and yep. that's why the show is called light exposing darkness because we care so much about deception we don't want people to be deceived i think all of us here have been deceived at some point yeah. in time mm -hmm. or even opening up about that i thank you so Absolutely. much blessings for sharing your personal story nobody yeah. can deny your own journey this is mm -hmm. what you've discovered this is where um, god has brought you where you're at today and i know there's a lot yeah. of people that are going down this road and so i pray that this has been eye-opening it's been eye-opening to me to see yeah. all this stuff and um, I just pray that if you know somebody that's even considering going to yoga because they have back pain or whatever, mm -hmm. show them this 
information so that they can make a, a, an intelligent decision whether they should do this or not. There's many different ways to help your back pain or whatever. Yeah. There's many different mm -hmm. ways to do stretching without involving chants and prayer mm -hmm. and all these things. Yeah. We are trying to uh, show people how to not be deceived. And so if you enjoyed this or if you were blessed by this episode, please give it a thumbs up. Please subscribe if you're not a subscriber and share this with your family and friends. If you want to support this ministry, you can go to littlelightstudios.tv and you can do a donation there. You can go to lightwear.shop and get a cool t-shirt that helps you wear your witness and you that watch helps and subscribe to little light kids little light like, kids that's right. as well it's a new channel we need your support to help that ministry grow so that we can train up children in the way they should go and mm -hmm. if you want to see more of this because you just did a whole series we will mm -hmm. put a link to the series in the description below and people can get in contact with you because this is something that i believe you guys need to share mm -hmm. if you don't understand this uh please watch all of her series yeah. blessings you will be blessed mm -hmm. it's not just her name you will actually get blessed yeah. and um help us get this word out yeah we love you. We thank you. We can't do this without you. We'll see you next time on LED Live. If you're looking for good, wholesome, educational content for your children, subscribe to our new channel, Little Light Kids.